Hello everyone, my name is Joe Barnard and welcome to this webcast. Let's just get a, a quick check on the audio here. Okay, cool. So we are all good. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, this, there's a lot of live streaming this week going on. I hope you don't mind that. I know sometimes it's, it's better, or like overall the quality is better on the videos that are edited together, but there's a lot of work this week and just a lot of opportunities for me to turn a camera on and show you folks what's going on with BPS. Let me just adjust some of the lighting here so things look a little bit better. Oh dear, there goes the plant. We're off to a solid start, folks. Okay, hold on. <laughs> so if you haven't uh, read the title, I recommend doing so, but if you just don't want to, I'll tell you what we're doing today. Um, we're doing integration on the Falcon Heavy, um, which means, okay, I just cannot make up my mind about where this light should be pointed. How about like that? We're doing integration on the Falcon Heavy, and what that means is we have a bunch of parts that need to go uh, into the Falcon Heavy model, and we're going to be putting them together. So one thing that is not really like well appreciated in aerospace, just so we're clear, like these are model rockets, this is not the real aerospace industry, but one thing that I think is underappreciated in a lot of aerospace fields is the uh, complexity involved in integration and actually building these things. So when a Falcon 9 or an Atlas V gets put together, what does that production line look like? How many people hours is, are actually put into putting that thing together? So let's start all the way at what I consider to be the heart of the BPS program, which is the flight computers. So right here, let me just zoom in here, we have four of the signal flight computers. Oh, you know what? I meant to flip this cam. In, uh, in OBS. Should I do that? Do you think that's possible? Oh, by the way, you'll notice the printer is moving in the bottom right of your screen. Um, let me also turn up <laughs> a lot of, uh, there's a lot of um, just uh, things that aren't exactly working wonderfully right now. You'll have to just be a little bit patient here. Let me turn up the exposure. Okay, yes, yeah, so the printer in the bottom right, we'll explain what that's printing in just a minute. Um, let me know in the chat, should I flip the camera so that when it's right side up for me, it's also right side up for you? Um, feels like the right thing to do, but it's just going to take a quick moment here uh, for me to do that. So, is it worth it? Do, we, do you think we should do it? Let me know. Yes, yes, flip it, yes, my goodness, it's a resounding yes, ladies and gentlemen, a resounding yes. We've also got a bunch of TVC material here today, because we have to build some TVC mounts. This is sort of like the little bit of everything stream going on right now. Let me go ahead and, uh, oh, don't, don't stop recording. Get out of studio mode. Let me go to the webcam. All right, there we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webcam. You can see bits of the center core back there. Um, now, just give me one second here while I flip things around um, on the workbench camera. So this guy filters. <laughs> this is uh, it's very exciting. It's a lot of... Okay, hold on. Do you think video delay... I would be pretty surprised if there wasn't just a flip. 
aspect ratio, image mask, crop. Okay, I can probably just rotate it, right? Let's try this. Let me try something right now. What if I just go like that? Does that work? I think this works. Uh, okay, you ready? Here we go, this should be flipped now. Um, let's give this a shot if I go out of studio mode. Okay, let's give this a shot. So this should be flipped, which means that when I zoom in and I put signal under the camera, you might have to move the camera as well, it should say, oh no, is it not flipped? What did I do? It's not flipped at all. All right. Doesn't appear flipped. Okay, please be patient. We're, we're getting there. This is why you tune into the Joey V live stream, though, because it's always a disaster. Let me, um... <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let me look at the filters one more time for this camera. And if we can't get it to work, then we can't get it to work. And I'll just figure it out. But um, if I go into maybe scaling and aspect ratio, no, that's not going to be what I want. Maybe, um, let's just try this. Just bear with me here. Is there any way that I can like rotate this? Um, it, okay, anyone who knows OBS, just tell me what to do. Help, help me out. If you know OBS, give me some hints here. Preview scaling, add, set color, order, tran oh, transform, here we go, here we go. Flip vertical. Oh, it didn't do it. That's disappointing. I really thought that would work. Um, fit to screen, okay, that works. And then what if I do transform, rotate 180 degrees? That works too. <gasps> Ooh, wonderful. Okay, great, we good. We good, folks. Thanks for the patience. So now, let me move this camera as well. Oh, it's a lot of... This stream is very messy. Okay. If I put this here, and I zoom in, and it focuses... Ah, it's wonderful! It's perfect! It's exactly what I wanted. That looks great. All right. So... Now I feel like I should adjust the 3D printing camera. Okay, let me just do it really quick, and then I promise we will get started. This is why people tune in, because live streams are sometimes a mess. It's like, why do you watch NASCAR? Because sometimes the cars, you know, hit each other. Okay. Much better. This is good. Yeah, you watch NASCAR, because, like, sometimes things get, you know, a little crazy. Okay, well, we're like 10 minutes into the stream. Let's get started. So I've got these flight computers here. Let's start off with the, with the flight computers and then we'll move on from there. And let me also just one more time adjust my, adjust my exposure so that it's a little bit brighter and things look pretty good. Okay, so this signal computer right here, does that look good? Oh, that looks great. This signal computer, um, one signal computer goes in to each core or each section of the Falcon Heavy model. Now, if you'd like details on the flight software and the hardware and how it launches and a bunch of specs about it, you can go down to this. <laughs> I can't speak today. You can go down to the description where it says for more info and then bps.space slash Falcon Heavy. If anyone wants to drop a link in there into the chat, that would probably be helpful too, um, although it's literally in the description, so you can probably find it. Either way, um, each one of these computers uh, controls part of the Falcon Heavy. So um, the white ones here, one of them is the left core, the right core, and then the upper stage. So the actual orientation of them in flight would be something like this. Um, let me move these out of the way as well. Yeah, the actual orientation in flight would be something like this. And uh, yeah, so what we need to do is actually get these computers into their mounting brackets. The mounting bracket holds it inside of the airframe. This is it's fairly boring work, but you all tuned in, so you've sealed your fate. Um, we need a bunch of mounting brackets to actually mount these inside of airframes. They have already been programmed. They're already ready to go. 
and they already have designations. Um, so it's going to be really important that I don't actually mix these computers up because then I'll forget um, which one has which piece of code on it. Like you don't want to run the upper stage code on the side core. Um, so you know, just make sure. Let me know if I ended up if I end up mixing any of these computers up. Let let me know in the chat. Um, we can also I can show you that these computers work by plugging one in here. Um, I have the bps.space piggy board, which so adorably said, okay, come on, you can focus, buddy. I believe in you, please. There it is. It says oink oink. Um, <laughs> the piggy board goes onto the bottom of Signal with these little pins. And these little pins, they actually get compressed a little bit. And that's how the board gets programmed, because you'll notice there is no USB port on any of these boards. Okay, here we go. Uh, and the reason for no USB port is because this is based on a consumer product. These are not um, the signal computers that you can actually buy from BPS. Um, these all have very customized code on them. So if I put one of the signal boards onto the piggy board, let's zoom in a little bit again. I put one of these onto the piggy board. It comes alive. So now it's ready for flight. Um, yeah, so that's, that's your proof that these actually do work. Um, OK, you know what? Can I make a confession here? Oh, dab. You want me to dab? I'll make a deal with you. YouTubers, listen up. Would you like to make a deal? Here's the deal. I can only dab when something good happens, when I, when I have a success. So like on the Kerbal Space Program stream that I did recently on the other channel, um, I dabbed when I made it back from the moon. So I'm only allowed to dab when there's a success. So if you want me to dab, remind me when something goes really well. OK, that's the rule. All right, so. What do we have next? Yeah, so each one of these computers needs to go in a mounting bracket. And uh, we'll just mix them up here. There we go. All right, here's the confession. I wanted to do a joke where I was going to mix all these computers up, and it was going to be like, oh, no, which one is which? But I actually have labeled them all. They all have labels about where they go on the rocket. Uh, upper stage, right core, left core, and then center core. All right. Now, you might be wondering, Joe, why are you printing? You probably aren't wondering this. Joe, why are you printing new uh, mounts for these flight computers? You'll notice a uh, difference between these two in that one of them, wow, it's really hard to do this upside down. Um, one of these brackets, one of these mounting brackets is sort of hollow. Like, it's, it's very, um, there we go. There's only one layer on top, and there's barely any infill. So let me show you the difference here with a scale. So this scale will show us how heavy in grams each one of these things are. Oh, wow, that angle is terrible for the application here. Oh. This should be better. OK. Does that look good? Let's see. <laughs> Did Joey B prepare enough for this stream? No. OK, so a, this is a typical mounting bracket. This is one that would, for instance, ship. I mean, it's in pretty bad shape, but it would ship with the Signal Avionics kit or something like that. It has, I believe, 25% infill and either two or three boundary layers. It might actually be three. And so it's a little chunky, and it has a mass of about 17 grams. But when we take out everything, because these computers don't see high shock, they don't see high vib vibration, at least on the Falcon Heavy, a lot of these events are low thrust to weight ratios. There's not a lot of shock or vibration. They don't need to sustain a lot of force. So, or sustain a lot of whatever you want to call it, you know what I mean. Instead of a 17 gram part, we can move all the way down to almost half at nine grams with these really small and really lightweight uh, components, which are these guys right here. So um, that's what we're printing today. We have a couple rounds of this print that we actually need to do. Um, and that's why we're printing it. I lost the other um, ones from the last Falcon Heavy flight. So we need to print more of them. We also need to build some TVC mounts today. Um, here's something. So does anyone remember 
during the last Falcon Heavy flight how there was a little bit of melting in the center core. This is the outer and inner gimbal of the uh, center core thrust vector control system. You'll see there's a decent amount of burning and scarring. Um, these cables are, are fairly well burned. It's, you know, it's like medium rare. Um, focus. Will it do it? Okay, well anyway, um, this is pretty gross. It's like, it's not good. <laughs> and you might wonder, hey Joe, where's the, where's the motor part? Let me show you. Here's the motor part. So, we did a hot staging thing during the last test, and this has become one melty boy because I recessed the motor too far into the motor mount to where we both got the Krushnik effect, which is, you can read up, you can look it up online if you'd like. We got some, uh, some stuff from the Krushnik effect, which is why we lost a lot of thrust in the center core, both from the motor being recessed into the airframe and subsequently recessed into um, the motor sleeve. And yeah, things just got really melty. You can see like, <laughs> this is what the motor tube should look like. And is that the front? It's hard to tell which direction is the front here, but this is there. <laughs> you can see it didn't, it didn't go so well. So we need to build a new one of those. These are the uh, ignition cables for this uh, middle motor here. And finally, I wrote down a couple other things on here that we need to do. We need to fix the bottom of the center core. There's a little bit of structural damage on the, damage on the airframe. And we need to, uh, well, that's it. Oh, we need to put like batteries and uh, cables and cards into the computer. So, excuse me. Let's take a couple of little questions here and then we will get started, get the show on the road. So for questions here, um, let's see what people have. If anyone has questions, please submit them. I will try to get to yours, but as, uh, as we found out last time, I am not great at getting to everyone's questions. So you're welcome to submit one, um, one or two times or three times or eight times. I don't know. Don't spam the chat, but like, if you don't get your question answered, it's not because I'm ignoring you. Okay. Can you dab now? Nope. No dabs until I've had a success or something has gone really well. Tacos or pizza? Pizza, but tacos, uh, actually no, tacos, because if you use a corn tortilla, I'm gluten-free now, because I am, I developed gluten intolerance. That's so convenient. Um, what filament do you print with? Usually polylactic acid. What servos do you use? Um, that's a great question, and look, we're going to have to use this later in the stream. These are the QC Past 9G servos. Does that show up upright on the screen? Um, let's see, my, my stream is a little bit delayed. These are QC Pass 9G servos, um, and I have quite a few of them. So these are basically servos that I've already tested and already uh, worked with to make sure that they look good and that they work well. So we'll be using these today. They're Osoyu uh, 9G servos, but frankly, they're all about the same. Okay, no tea, why? I'm literally out of tea. I need to go grocery shopping so bad. Um, what is your advice for aspiring rocketeers? Pick a section of rocketry that you really like and just go all in. Um, uh, hey Joe, what's the airframe made of? It's made of traditional cardboard, 74 millimeter airframe. I don't think I link it on the Falcon Heavy page, but it's linked on the signal page. Um, is the Falcon Heavy going to land? Eventually, but maybe not for a while. Um, oh boy, what's the, the 3D printer that I use? I, yeah, that's actually a good question because you can't see it well enough in the frame. It's a Prusa i3 Mark II. Um, someone asked why don't you label the boards? And it's because there's no reason to print new boards for this project. Um, R, L, R, L. There's no reason to print new boards for this project. Um, it's not something that is gonna be super repeated or anything like that, so, um, oh my gosh, this is so confusing. Uh, yeah, so you just put some blue tape on them. Eagle PCB design software? Yes, I do use that. Uh, sometimes KiCad too. Um, let's see, what else? What are your opinions on kit rockets? They're awesome for getting started, and they're awesome if you just wanna launch right now. Um, how is the motor fixed to the rocket? In the thrust vector control mount. 
when did you get interested in rockets? Uh, I've been interested for most of my life, but uh, got super interested in like 2015. Um, okay, let's do one more. Let me try to pick one that I want. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, da, na, 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 na. All right. Um, I can't find any that super stand out. Some of them. Okay. Will the signal kit be available from now space again? Um, maybe. That's all I can say. We might do another production round of the signal kit in the fall. We might not. Uh, it's just really stressful to produce boards, and I want to take care of my mental health and make sure that I'm doing work that is inspiring to me. So I, th the idea is that if you still wanted to do thrust vector control and you still weren't looking to build everything from the ground up, you could build the blip board and follow the landing model rockets tutorials. That's kind of what is uh, becoming adjacent to signal. Okay. Here we go. BPS is your success, now dab. No, no dabs yet. All right, so we already have two of these um, uh, lightweight things printed. I printed some before the stream, so let me go grab those and we'll start to um, assemble the Falcon Heavy upper stage computer. I also want to do that. Okay, we'll start to assemble the FH upper stage flight computer. This bug needs to end. There's a fruit fly. I see him. Come close. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I got him. <laughs> oh, that was violent. Did I shake any cameras? <laughs> got him. All right. That was a that was worrying for a little bit, but I definitely got him. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Let me get those mounts. You want me to dab because I got the fly? There you go. So these are the uh, mounting brackets for the FH upper stage. Now they do have uh, orientation attached to them. Let me watch the dab. Um, you'll see that one side has BPS space written upright and the other side has it written upside down. This is just aesthetic. It doesn't really mean a whole lot other than if you mount it the correct way, bps.space is always facing up. There we go. So that snaps in just like that. It's pretty easy. Um, and then we need some screws to actually secure it. So let's do this. I'm just going to use easy screws here. These are 3.5 millimeter screws. A lot of this is basically built off of the signal architecture. And so even though it's not commercially available. I can use a lot of the things that have already been built to build more things uh, and do it very easily. So here we go. Let's just screw these in. And then I think the next step is we'll put a battery in here. One, two. Oh, don't roll away, buddy. Nope, that didn't work at all. <laughs> Three, and this is, a, this is an incredible number of people here. Thank you all for joining. And four, okay, great. So now we have our mounting brackets secured in the computer here. I'm gonna just zoom out a little bit. Uh, we have our mounting brackets secured in the computer. And um, I actually just got a totally new delivery, I'm trying to look for it here, of uh, lithium polymer batteries that I want to pull from. So let me see if I can find those. They're somewhere, I'm sure, but I don't remember where I put them. Which is a problem, because I need them. Can we get an F in the chat because I don't know where the batteries are? Also, I need this. There's a ton of them. I should 
totally know where they are. Oh, wait, I think they're in the other room. Hold on. Got them. So these batteries are, they're three cell lithium polymer batteries. These are linked on the signal page. I believe it's an affiliate link actually, but um, they're linked on the signal page if you're interested in knowing what these are. They power just about all of the flights except for those which need, uh, which have a huge power draw. And that's the case of like the, uh, what do you call it? reaction control system where these valves are drawing 500 milliamps each and uh, you, you kind of just don't want to play it like that. Now the first thing I'd like to do for these batteries is, the first thing I like to do is mark which side is negative and which side is positive. So you can see this black wire right here and this red wire right here. Um, and so we're just going to emphasize which side is negative so that we never really plug things in backwards. Um, now, Signal does have reverse uh, polarity detection, which means that if we did plug things in backwards, uh, we would be protected. We'd basically, it, like, it wouldn't hurt the computer at all. Um, and if anyone's interested, we can do that later today. Just plug things in backwards. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Chris and Lance. Good job, Sensei. <laughs> thank you both. All right, so that is done, and now we need a connector for it to actually connect it to the flight computer. So I have this whole set of connectors that I have built up here. Um, we'll pull just one of them out right there. I ran out of red and black wires, so I used blue and yellow. And so these wires will connect this battery to the flight computer. And we're doing the upper stage flight computer. So I will go ahead Let's demonstrate that there is uh, reverse polarity detection, or reverse polarity protection. Uh, I get a screwdriver over here. And then we insert the battery in the wrong way. I've done the same thing here. So, right, we have a black side and a white side. Uh, the, the negative is the yellow terminal, is the yellow wire right here. And so if we put the negative into the positive terminal, here's what I'll do. If this works, if it doesn't fry the computer, then I'll dab. I've done this test about a thousand times, so it shouldn't be a problem. So it's a it's a near, it's an almost guaranteed dab. So this is the incorrect polarity on this computer right now, and the computer is off. Um, so if I were to plug things in and turn it on, the computer will not boot up. I haven't done this in a while, so I suppose there's a there's a chance it could go terribly wrong. <laughs> but that's what live streams are for. Nothing, because there's a bunch of protection against it. And now, if we were going to, it just won't boot up, because, I mean, you're not going to, there's not enough uh, need for a total reversal thing. OK, so um, then if we plug it in the right way, and I tighten down these screw terminals, there we go. And then I plug it in and turn it on. There we go. Not bad. And if I launch it, you can see it's in the flight mode. We go down. Oh, this one's the upper stage computer. So it has like timers built in to when it actually detects Apogee and things like that. Um, it's like a little bit more complicated than the other computers. Procedures, Joe, procedures. I have procedures. They're on my whiteboard and you can't see them. And I definitely have them, so please believe me. All right, should I dab? Can we get a dab count in the, uh, in the chat, by the way? So here we go. This is a dab for the successful uh, reverse polarity protection test. This is a pretty hard one, pretty hard dab, TBH. OK. <laughs> All right. Oh, thank you, Trista. Just wanted to say hello. Can't stay long. Crab, crab, crab. Thanks a bunch, Trista. Can we all get claws up for Trista, please? 
Um, also, Parker, I don't know if you're watching. I definitely owe you a text. I saw you sent one, and I, I owe you a response, but haven't done that yet. Now, the other thing I like to do with these batteries, because I don't actually use um, this output from them. I just prefer to use this. It's a little easier. Um, is I need to put some tape around it because I want to further protect the back of the computer um, from any chance of shorting out. So I'm just going to do this and like scrunch it up against the battery. And now we will not use that port. So do this. One, two, three, buckle my shoe. And that's all. Now it's a little blue bundle of potential fire because lithium polymer be like that sometimes. Um, I need some rubber bands too to strap this to the back of the computer. So why don't I find some rubber bands with my eyeballs? Hold on. Okay, I used my eyeballs and I was able to secure some rubber bands. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. So if you're just joining us, thank you very much for joining. Um, I, it's, still, it's still unclear to me why people choose to do this, but thank you very much for joining. So we're strapping the battery to the back of the FH second stage, or the upper stage, really. Once you start getting into multi-core vehicles, I feel like it's more appropriate to label the stages based on their uh, height or relative position rather than their order. Does that make sense? So like, no, it's no longer first stage. It's like booster stage, center core stage, upper stage, something like that. Um, just so it's a little bit less confusing. Okay, and the other thing I like to do is stretch these rubber bands out across the SD card slot because if the vehicle hits the ground, there should be protection against this, but if the vehicle hits the ground, we don't want the SD card coming out because then we can't log any data to it. And then the last thing that I want to do here is just sort of um, put this under the rubber band right here, and the signal computer is going to wear its battery as a little backpack. Isn't that cute? It's a little battery backpack. Claws up for uh, having a backpack. <laughs> oh, thanks, Rob Hench. I will give you this $9.99 if you don't dab after the next success. Wow. Conflict. I feel like I have a moral obligation to all those who want the dab and a financial obligation to at least one person who does not. I'm in a real pickle here, folks. Um, all right, let's just make sure this still works and then we'll keep proceeding. Great. You wanna look at something else that's pretty cool? So here's the computer in the launch pad idle mode. Um, and if I launch it, it doesn't, it doesn't like that. It sends an abort because it wasn't idling on the pad straight long enough. Let's let it idle for a little while. And uh-oh, random shutdown during flight while there's a bunch of data being logged to the computer. What are we going to do? Because the data wasn't pushed to the SD card. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to use signals feature to automatically detect that there has that there is residual data on the card so that if there's an anomalous event it saves that data it won't delete it and when you turn it back on it's now logging all of that data from the flash chip because it found a bunch of it it's logging all that data to the SD card <laughs> thank you Nathaniel would you call yourself a hobbyist uh, great work by the way yeah I think I still would um, I like, I'm in a really weird space where there's like some things that I do that I wouldn't normally do because this is a thing that pays rent, but for the most part, like I do projects because I like them. I keep alluding to the secret project that's coming up in the fall. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's like, it's, it's stuff like the thing that's coming up, um, that... I do not because it makes money or anything like that, but because I just really love to. And I think that's like a good justification of where the hobbyist line is. Um, th this is one penny more to ensure that the dab happens after a success. Uh-oh. This is not good, everyone. Hold on. Let me just make sure the stream quality is still good. 
Okay, we've dropped a couple of frames. Hey, let me just change the stream quality really quick. Um, let's go down to 4K so that we don't um, throttle at all. The quality might drop just slightly, but it'll be worth it. Um, so here's money now, dab. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a big problem. <laughs> Rob Hench has donated nine ninety nine in order for me to not dab after the next success. Tape Master twenty one has donated ten dollars in order to make sure I dab. Can I get some advice? I don't know what to do. <laughs> I would like to honor both of those folks who generously donated to the program, but I also don't know what to do because they are in direct conflict of each other. Um, okay. Next up, we need um, at least two things coming out of this computer for pyro channels and things like that. Here's more money. Now dab. Can I whip? Let's do this. I think this will make everyone happy. I'll whip. I won't dab. <laughs> no, I can't dab. Rob Hench said no. I can't, I can't dab. I'll whip. Ready? That's better. That helps. Will you ever try and recreate the crew dragon? Yeah, I really want to do an inflate abort like mimic test where we light the motors um, of the crew dragon. We light like tiny little A motors. Like in the, in the upper stages of the Falcon Heavy, there are these little separation motors up here. These little like A level motors. <laughs> What is this? Ignore that Bob guy. He's crazy. All right, Rob Hench has, I think, consented to the dab. If we get one more, like, suggestion to dab, then I think we have to do it. I don't know. I, I'm still undecided. Now, the other thing that we have to attach to this upper stage is um, a little breakout for some alligator clips. So hold on one second. I have a bunch of alligator clips in this box, and let me just look through it and find some. And these will help us connect to the Falcon Heavy fairing to actually blow it open when it's time to um, <laughs> when it's time to separate the fairing. And this is probably good. We don't need a very long one. These are pretty rusty though, so maybe not. Uh, I guess we could just use the blue one. But the blue one's kind of for the legs. Uh, Hold on. What can I use, folks? What can I use? I have a finite, oh, there's one. This one will be good. <laughs> oh boy, all right, there's, there's lots of requests for the dab. I will do it. Here, thank you so much for the requests. Let's, um, let me honor those. All right, get your screen recorders going. Get Thrust to make Thrust face next to me. Everyone get ready. It's coming. Hold on, make sure he doesn't fall over. He's falling. Come on, buddy, you can stand up, I promise. I believe in you. This is very frustrating. Okay, Thrusty, you have become an inconvenience. You're going, you're going back to the couch. This is, this segment of the stream has not been a complete success. Here we go, everyone. I will honor the dabs now. I am so sorry. I apologize to my friends, to all my fans, to my family, to uh, those who will no longer love me after this. It is done. <laughs> I think we have more dislikes because of this now. I don't care. Oh my god, please don't dislike the video. Um, here comes the Streisand effect. So these used to be ignition. Oh, this is rusty too. I don't think I can use this. Um, all right. I feel like I have no option. I'm just going to use this blue one. Problem is the blue one looks so nice. 
I'm going to have to disassemble some other things to actually make this work. So the parachutes on this one can just go on channel one or channel two. And if I can just think about which thing we had. Uh, let me look at the previous settings for the Falcon Heavy. Oh, wait, no, I don't even have those. OK. We'll just put it on channel two and call it a day. I believe channel three is what triggers the upper stage. OK. Sorry, folks. You'll have to bear with me. I need to, look, I need to take a look at the play software here. Um, here we go. There's a siren. <laughs> Maybe it's for the dab. Maybe that's why the siren is coming on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what I need to do right now is look at the flight software and just make sure that I'm doing the right thing with the upper stage. And then, that, and what I mean by that is like which channel does uh, the pyro get attached to? So state four, state five, there's more sirens. State four and under pyro control. I hate the siren so much. Um, your pyro arm. Oh, here we go. This is what I want. Pyro one, center core guidance. Oh, because the upper stage is basically a center core. It has the same thing. So the center core start is on pyro three. Start center. Okay, hold on. I'm almost there, folks. State one gets launched, and we keep the TBC locked at zero. State two, if center core start equals one, TBC compute and TBC write, and we stay in state two until burnout detection. Um, but burnout detection, hold on, burnout detection has a qualifier somewhere down here. Yes, if flight time is greater than 6.5 seconds, then burnout detect. Okay, we're all set. Let's go back to the workbench. Oh, I've missed a lot. Um, thank you, everyone, for the super chats. Dab and is a 60 million... 60 million. Uh, Riley, dab and is a 60 millimeter airframe okay for a TBC rocket? Uh, not for the TBC rockets that I build, but maybe you can make a mount that's smaller. Um, I build for 74 millimeter airframes, although the next scout vehicle is going to be 66 millimeters. Um, not the usual YouTube. That was epic. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. So what we have learned here is that um, the second stage has, um, there's a lot going on in my pocket. I hope this isn't email extravaganza 2.0. <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on in the Discord. Um, all right, so Pyro Channel 3 is what controls the, I don't think we need, okay, Pyro Channel 3, we're going to put the parachutes on Pyro Channel 2, and then Pyro Channel 3, I think, is going to be, like, organically wired, which means we're going to wire the pyro directly up to the computer without alligator clips. Um, Oh, you know what? I honestly think we don't even need this. Okay, let's get the upper stage. Let's just do this. So this is the upper stage of the Falcon Heavy right here. It's, uh, it, it's like pretty small compared to most of the rockets that I build. Um, and I showed this on the last stream, but if anyone's interested, it does work. This motor is inert, um, and you can tell because there's a bunch of hot glue on the end of it. But if I tilt it up and leave it there for a second, we'll eventually average out all of our readings. And then when it's time to launch, you can see it move at the bottom there. And I think if I tilt it over, it's going to abort. Yeah, it, it aborts if you tilt it over too far. And um, at that point, it starts looking at the altitude. And eventually, it's going to come back down to the ground and figure out that it's time to log the data. There we go. And it's basically a normal rocket for um, all intents and purposes. We do need to replace this computer because this is running standard signal flight software. 
Um, hey, by the way, I'm gonna uh, miss when these when the print finishes. If someone wants to just remind me in the chat, if the chat wouldn't mind just yelling at me when the print finishes, that would be great. So just for scale here, we have a signal computer that goes there, and then let me grab an igniter. What I'm trying to figure out is if we need an extension to actually light the upper stage motor. Here's a, a, a regular old fireworks igniter, and if we put this on Pyro Channel 3, we have just enough space to get down to the motor. But we actually go through this inlet here, and it's going to be within the airframe. You know, I think there's enough space. And if there's not, we can just make a small extension. We will save weight by not including these things. And the other thing is, I wonder if this is still at the bottom of the bearing. Joe, the print isn't done. Okay, so, oh yeah, they're all gone. Okay, but the leads for the, um, for the fairing come out of there, and they should be at least this long, right, out of the fairing. So if we put that in to scale with where the fairing would go, that's plenty long enough for, actually, for us to directly connect it to the signal computer in the upper stage. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost done with the, uh, the upper stage assembly for the Falcon Heavy then. The last step here is, of course, to wire up the thrust vector control mount. We've got this bad boy down here, and he's connected to the wrong computer. So I'm going to stick my fingers in there and detach it. Um, actually, that's going to be too hard to do. So let's go ahead. I need more rocket cradles. Where are mine? print like one or two more of these. Okay. So we're going to take this computer out. That is stripped. <laughs> All right. The BPS rocket cradle. Hey, can someone drop a link to the uh, the BPS rocket cradle advertisement that I made? If someone wouldn't mind just dropping one of those, it's on the channel here somewhere. That is a throwback. All right, if I turn this around, I can more easily detach these servos. Great, so this is the flight computer that is old. Let's not get this confused with the newer version, which is this guy right here. Uh, and we also have to detach these leads. So let's do that real quick. Okay, and you know what's tricky here is it's going to be hard to wire up this TBC mount. Uh, I think I have to detach the TBC mount, slide it up through the airframe, attach the leads, and then slide it back down, which frankly sucks, but is part of vehicle integration. This is why... This is why uh, vehicle integration is underappreciated. Basically, the more mass efficient you want your rocket to be, the more work you will have to do in putting it together. So if I slide the vectoring mount up through the airframe, you can see it in there now. I can attach it here. And we have a pretty much fixed length. Um, it looks like we've got X and Y on the correct sides. So slide it up through the computer and attach these leads. So here we go. X, this is the same mount that actually flew on the Falcon Heavy too. X and Y. And if I turn these on, just check the mount. Cool, yeah, it works just fine. So now we can slide this all the way back down in here. And then we have to look at these uh, screw holes here. We have to look at these screw holes and make sure that we are properly lined up. Um, and it's kind of hard to find out where that point actually is sometimes. 
Oh, hold on, here we go, there it is. So that's a screw hole right there. You can kind of see when it's printed material. Here, let's go all the way in. Enhance! If you look through there, you can see when it's printed material and when the screw hole shows up. So that's what I'm doing is trying to align them. And it's not that easy. There we go. So one. Print. Print is done. Okay, thank you for yelling at me, everyone. The yelling is much appreciated. Let's, let's screw in these parts, let the printer cool down for a minute, and then we'll go get the print. Thank you so much for the note. Oh, I did this wrong. Thank you so much for the notifications, though. I did this wrong. I, I didn't screw it into the mount. I screwed it just directly into the airframe. That's fine. We can deal with it. Okay, that's the screw hole right there. So here we go. That's definitely secure. It's more secure than before. And we'll get all four of them. Because we want rigidity here. You'll notice the second core has a significant amount of damage. It's not hard to build a second, uh, the, uh, sorry, the upper stage has a significant amount of damage. Um, that's because it has hit the ground a couple of times, and we're probably one or two flights away from just replacing it altogether. It is still structurally sound, I will let you know. It's just not very good looking, but we won't tell that to the second stage because we don't want to hurt its feelings. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing for the flight computer in the second stage. And here's a little secret. Um, I usually don't, when I actually fly these rockets, I know, I know the print is done. <laughs> I know the print is done. When I fly these rockets, I usually don't use all of the screws. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that can be screwed into the flight computer. I usually don't use all of them because it's usually not required. Um, I just stagger two of them, one on the top, one on the bottom. And this can help us save just a tiny bit of mass here. And the computer doesn't move too much. It's not. It's certainly not gonna move in flight that much because there's not a ton of vibration. Um, I might put one more screw in there though, just for good measure. Okay, and that's good. That's pretty rigid there. All right. So one more time, if we turn this on, you'll see the mount actuate. Excellent. Now we'll have to realign this at some point, although the alignment does look pretty good, at least like down the center. Okay, to everyone who yelled at me that the print is done, I will get the print right now. Here we go. Thank you for yelling at me. I did ask for it. Answer some more questions now. By the way, it's fairly early on, and Joey B is working extremely hard this week, so why don't we just say, if anyone is interested, I'll do a Kerbal Space Program stream after this. But I don't know what to actually do. Maybe we'll go to Duna. Okay. <laughs> Dab, for the print being done. Should I dab for the print being done? Is that worth dabbing for? I'm honestly not sure of the dab scale here, so you'll have to keep me posted. <laughs> what do you use for engines? Well, the, the primary thing that I like the most is um, the Estes F-15 engine, um, the S Estes F-15 rocket motor. It's just like, it's really solid. I've never had one blow up on me, um, and... It has a decent burn time of 3.5 seconds, and it's black powder, which means it shoots out a ton of fire. 
Um, so uh, people say yes, no, no, don't do it. Prusa prints itself. No, we must not overuse the dab. You know what? DH Doctor. Claws up for DH Doctor. Maybe, maybe people will be mad. That is correct. Let's not kill the meme. Let's be really respectful of the meme of the dab. So we won't overdo it. And the last step here, oops, excuse me. The last step here is let's reattach the fairing. Um, this will have to be changed later on, but just when we actually integrate the vehicle, I'd like to have the second stage look like a second stage. Okay, there's one. They're just tiny screws through the airframe into the 3D printed part. Three and four. Excellent. Okay, so this is a second stage that is ready to fly on the Falcon Heavy. Well, the only thing that we're missing is pyros, um, but that's not too hard to do. Um, those are pretty easy to do. I don't think we'll get to pyro um, stuff today, but uh, yeah. Man, I just looked at the uh, I just looked at the other flight computers involved in today's work, and the thought crossed my mind like, what if I had put this the wrong computer in the wrong part? Um, we're not going to do that today, though, because I've labeled them and I'm really good at everything I do. <laughs> and just so we're all clear, that is sarcasm. Okay, how do you get over the fear of failure? I don't really know. I. I don't want to sound weird about it, but truthfully, I don't think I have that fear that much. And it also, like, everything is one big joke. We're all going to die. You should just do what you want, man. The other thing is, like, anytime I've gotten, like, super honest with someone or super... This is, like, very introspective. Anytime I've gotten like super honest with, with someone or like cross some weird boundary in the name of like sharing some truth or whatever, like my relationship with that person gets deeper. I don't think that's really what you're talking about, but like just being exactly who you are and being open about it is a good deal. And it often like makes things way better. Okay. Thanks for coming to the Joey B introspection hour. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's do, what do you think? Left core or right core or center core? What computers should we assemble right now? Left core, right core, or center core? Let's see what the chat thinks. What about a roadster in the fairing? The roadster is dead. <gasps> yes! By the way. By the way, there is a roadster going in the fairing. And it's somewhere, I promise, but I just don't know where yet. Uh, here it is. Okay. Center. Everyone wants the center core. We will obey the wishes. The center core is more complicated, though. So, during the last Falcon Heavy flight, Charlie Garcia, my good friend, who has an awesome series on liquid rocket engines, if you'd like that kind of thing, someone can link it. Um, Charlie Garcia... Uh, sent me a model of a Tesla Roadster that I believe he made himself, um, and it's all right. I didn't do a good job 3D printing it. You can see there's, like, garbage all over it, and I, I painted it a little bit, but it was mostly made to look like a Roadster from afar. If I zoom out, it doesn't look too bad. If I zoom out and move it around a lot, you can't really tell that the quality is poor. However, when I zoom in it is abundantly clear that this is not a very good Tesla Roadster. So this is what flew on the last flight. I screwed an eye bolt through there and attached a parachute. Oh, Charlie's here. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> and the reason I brought Charlie up is because not only did he make this, but um, a while back he sent me a bunch of um, high pressure tubing and valves for some other stuff that's coming up and he sent this along with it. Let's see if I can get it to work. Oh, yes, perfect. So this is the actual Hot Wheels Tesla Roadster with Starman in it. Isn't that cool? So it's got a little Starman. It's like the correct model of the Roadster. Um, I'm not sure exactly what scale this is, 
Um, I don't know if it's 148th, but it must be pretty close. Um, it's probably like 120 something. If anyone, let's look it up. How close? My guess is it's 125th. Hot Wheels Tesla Roadster. Let's see what scale it is. My guess is somewhere close to 125th. Um, uh, oh, Amazon, no, not interested. Uh, 109,250, no, that's not it. Does anyone know 164th, 172? Does anyone actually know the scale? If someone could help me find this. Um, what scale? Is the Tesla 160? People think 160. Um, what? Huh? what scale? 164th scale. Okay, uh, I went the wrong direction. So instead of 148th, it should be 164th, which is a uh, not a doubling, but like two thirds or a, an extra third. Anyway, the point here is that. Uh, it almost fits. It's just a little big for the actual size of the rocket. So what I'll do is I'll probably tie a parachute around this, or more likely I will epoxy a parachute to this to make sure it doesn't come off. Um, yeah, and it's flying with that, but we won't put it in the fairing just yet. All right, next up is the center core, because the chat seems to be most interested in building the center core. Let's do that. Um, so we'll start out just like we did last time with the actual flight computer brackets. Um, and actually, what I'd rather do is start out with the battery this time. The battery is to, easier to do. No, nah, screw it. We'll start with the brackets. All right. So once again, just like last time, we have one that has the text upside down and one that has the text right side up. So we'll put the right side up one on the bottom and then upside down will go upside down on the top. Just make sure it's all aligned um, and it looks good. Now I'll grab a couple of screws and we'll get to work. Now there's one thing that's missing from the center core. And if anyone remembers that thing which is missing is, uh, well, it's a, a properly working thrust vectoring mount is missing. So we have to build that uh, right after we build this computer. Which is a cool thing. I don't know if I've built a TVC mount on a stream before. Oh boy, dropping screws everywhere. Joe, how do you program the boards? I use uh, the Arduino environment, the Arduino IDE. Um, and I write most of the software in the Arduino language, which is pretty much C++. It's slightly abstracted. So the Arduino language is just a little bit friendlier than C++, um, but it's all, like if you were to look at any of the CPP libraries that you have as part of your Arduino kits or something like that, they, they look very familiar. Okay, great. Um, so we've got this, now we need a battery connector. I've got some here. Let's use this guy. Same colors as last time. And how is BPS funded? BP, okay, here comes the Patreon plug. Plug your ears, everyone. The B <laughs> BPS is funded through generous uh, support through a lot of folks who are over on patreon.com slash BPS dot space or underscore space, um, unclear. But uh, that's how it's supported right now. We make a little bit of money through YouTube ad revenue. We make a little bit of money from those Amazon affiliate links, but most of it is from um, a lot of folks who, who are very generous over on Patreon. Um, and I'm sure someone has dropped a link to that in the chat. Um, anyway, that's how it's funded. It was self-funded for a long time um, because it was just a project and it wasn't very successful. So it wouldn't have been, I think it wouldn't have been, not necessarily wouldn't have been right to ask for money, but I think like, it just, I'm not sure it would have been appropriate to, to ask for support back then. Anyway, the point is, it was self-funded for a long time. I was a wedding videographer, which lets you spend lots of time during the week when there aren't weddings uh, on rockets, and uh, then you just give up your weekends for weddings. 
It's actually a wedding videographer, not a photographer. Okay, so I'm putting blue tape on this battery once again, um, just so we can secure that cable, keep things a little bit cleaner on here, and uh, yeah, that should be good. Um, and then the other thing, if anyone remembers the other step that I like to take here, someone says KSP stream please, in all caps. Um, yes, the answer is yes. I will probably, I'll almost certainly do one after this. Hey, does anyone want to see something really, really funny that uh, not everyone will get? Uh, raise your hand if you watch The Office. <laughs> Everyone's hand should be up, by the way, just so we're clear. All right, just marking the negative terminal on here. Okay, <laughs> lots of people watching The Office. So yesterday, I have really, this is very personal, I have really bad acid reflux, which means my stomach is bad at holding acid in and it's, it's just bad. It's not a good thing. So every now and then, I get an endoscopy where they stick a camera down your throat. It's not an incredibly fun experience, uh, but you go to a hospital and they stick a camera down your throat. So I had one of those yesterday morning and they drug you up pretty good. Um, so you can't drive afterward. So I had my friend Kelly come and pick me up and she brought me this balloon. Hold on. Ready? It was bigger before, but on it, it says, it is your endoscopy. Like the Dwight birthday thing. It is your birthday period. It is your endoscopy. And she brought that in. <laughs> okay, I don't know how I got on that uh, subject or tangent. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We're gonna put these rubber bands around here. Oh, we need to attach the leads um, here. So positive is the blue cable. <laughs> Did he died? Better than a colonoscopy. True that. That's just, that is just how digestion be. You know, honestly, sometimes it'd be like that, man. Are you gonna make a Starship model rocket? Devin, good question. No, but also yes. Once again, the folks who are in the Discord know what I am referring to. So the answer is no, but also kind of yes. I won't make us, it'll be closer to, I'm not gonna give too much away. No, but also yes. Mostly no. All right. So this is the same procedure that we're gonna do last time where I'm just gonna thread. Um, it's helpful to keep all of these things consistent between cores. I'm gonna thread this little connector up through the rubber bands and then the battery goes there we will power things up hi from mexico hi okay there we go that feels all right i kind of want another rubber band in there but that should be okay i'll power on just to make sure it works Okay, we're all good. That is the center core computer, ready to go. Now, we need some other things here. Uh-oh, hold on. We are not done yet. So, here's the thing. The thing is that all of these cables are rusty, and I hate that. Sorry, folks, stand by. Where do you think my other cables are? I don't know if there's a live streaming handbook, but completely walking up and saying, hold on, is definitely not in it. I think we're going to have to pull some stuff from Scout. 
we just don't have enough cables in here. This is really surprising that we don't have enough, though. Sorry, Scout. You are a sacrifice now. You have become... Sacrifice. Can I get an F in the chat for Scout? Oh, thanks, D... D. Garrick. D. Garrick. Keep up the awesome, ex awesome experience. It's like Kerbal Space Program in real life. real life. Thank you very much. Thank you for the Fs, by the way. Can we get a rip in peace for Scout as well? Oh, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. Hey, for anyone who is curious how I was live streaming video from the rocket, we can uh, take a look at that now. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is disconnect these leads because these are live right now. Um, these are live charges attached. Um, and it's fine, signal has plenty of protection so it, it won't actually fire. Um, but we don't need to be connected here. Um, here we go. <laughs> Rip in peace. Okay, so I'm disconnecting the charges. One. And really what I want from this computer is not the charges so much as I want the cables. These little alligator clips are very helpful. And I keep, every few months, I make a few more alligator clips. Like I just, I make them out of raw alligator clips and wire. Um, and they just disappear. I don't know, I don't understand it. It's like teachers and whiteboard markers. Like they just, I don't know where they go. <laughs> All right. That's all set. Yeah, so this is the this is the flight computer for Scout D1. Um, it's obviously a mess. So what we've got going... Oh, thank you, Rockwell. Um, what we've got going on here is a small video transmitter here, an omnidirectional antenna, so that when the rocket rolls, um, this is roughly in the center of the rocket. It's not long enough to actually make it to the center. Um, the video TX is powered by a small lithium polymer back here. I had a second lithium polymer uh, back there as well. And then the v v VTX is broken out by this cable to the outside of the rocket where it plugs into the run cam and then feeds the video through this cable back to the VTX, through the antenna, and down to the ground. So that's the whole process. But what, once, uh, once again, what we're really interested in here is this blue cable and this blue and white cable. The green cable may also be helpful at some point, but... Um, because I'm really smart, I hot glued it to the thing. <laughs> Past Joe makes some ridiculous decisions. All right, that's good. All right, there we go. We have the cables that we want, and the computer goes over here. Okay. How are we doing? The stream count is still, like, really... It's holding pretty well. I'm, I'm quite pleased. I'm, I'm positively chuffed. Wow, I'm, I'm not gonna say that again. All right, so the parachutes for this cannot go, let me go ahead and look at the flight code one more time. Uh, the parachutes, I believe, should not go on, I'm just looking at the different channels that the code says we should attach things to. Hi everyone, welcome back to the, the webcam thing. You can see my endoscopy balloon back there. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I've said this already, but basically, yeah, we're looking at the, the pyro code for the center core to make sure that um, all of the channels correspond to what I want them to do. So uh, on pyro three in mode one, when barrow average is above four and system state is less than three and greater than one and pyro three time is less than pyro on time millis and barrow average is greater than pyro three alt, then, oh, ooh, we don't even do center core guidance. Oh, that's because it's on a timer. Sorry, everyone, this is boring. I just can't show the code. Um, Reset the PID once, mostly for the I term. And so that is when Pyro 3 is in mode 4, Pyro 3 arm, TVC compute, TVC write, 
Okay, I think Pyro 3 triggers the second motor. And so we can use one or two for the legs and or the uh, parachutes. So we'll use two for parachutes, three for everything else. Okay, great. Sorry, just figuring this stuff out. Workbench again. Just play Minecraft. I'm not gonna play Minecraft. I don't care about Minecraft. You're welcome to play Minecraft. You go do it. Uh, all right, so this is going to Pyro Channel 2, and that goes up to parachutes. This one needs to be fairly long, because if you look at where the flight computer will sit, this is the center core. The flight computer sits right here, and the parachute leads, actually it doesn't need to be that long. But I'd like to make it so that if we detach up here, yeah, this is plenty long. That'll be fine. So we're going to connect to channel 2. And here we go. What am I missing in the chat here? Um, Joe just lost all my respect for insulting Minecraft like that. Sorry, Nicholas. Joe, play Minecraft. No! I play Kerbal Space Program. That's my game. Joe, will you ever take BPS public? Almost certainly not. Um, yeah, and we don't need a cash infusion anyway, and usually that's like kind of the reason that you want to go, or you're interested in exiting. It's going to be like one or two of those, of those things, and I have an interest in neither of those. Okay, uh, now, over here, oh, we are going to need this green cable. All right, let's just do this. There's hot glue on it. I don't know why I'm like this. So I want this green cable here to actually run down the side of the vehicle. Hey, can someone... Can I get a, um, can I ask for a favor? I need a favor from everyone. I, really, I just need a favor from like one person, but I need a favor. Can someone hit me up? Cause I'm not gonna do it now. Can someone hit me up in like tomorrow or something? Just like shoot me a tweet and remind me, hey Joe, you need to buy more spooled wire. Um, because I keep forgetting to, and I really need to. I'm out of all of my, like, ready-to-go wire. Okay. That's the favor. So we've got this green line right here. This guy goes to Pyro Channel 3. Joe, are you making Jet Engine for the secret project? No, I am not. That was a plan for a short period of time, and then I decided, based on several uh, factors, that the jet engine was not the right choice. Okay. There we go. And we need another one in this. There we go. And... Tighten it down. And then I don't think we're going... Okay, I have some disappointing news, everyone. Can we just get this out of the way? Here's the disappointing news. I don't know if we're going to fly the next version of Falcon Heavy with landing legs at all. I might paint them on the vehicle so it just looks like we have landing legs. But the legs are heavy enough, and it's not actually trying to propulsively land. The legs are heavy enough that it's starting to impact... You just have to like cut a lot of corners if you use the legs on it. I think I'd still like to paint them on there. I just don't think we have like, yeah, paper landing legs. Maybe I'll use paper landing legs or like cardboard landing legs. <laughs> Actually, I have plenty of cardboard here. I could probably make fairly convincing cardboard landing legs. We'll see. We'll see. Undetermined. 
Okay, so this green guy is gonna run down the side of the airframe, and he's gonna light the second motor in the center core. Um, and so that's what his job is. I'm also going to, I feel like this is a good idea. I do this on some flights. Um, I just tape over the leads because it's exposed metal and I don't want them to short against anything um, randomly if I'm turning the computer on. So there's one, and then we'll use this piece of tape here. Okay, excellent. So, this computer is done. Does anyone know what the next step is? If you know what the next step is, put it in the chat. Let's see how many people are paying attention. The computer for the center core is done. What's next? <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, Charlie. The answer is, the answer to your question is, um, uh, probably like 15% on one metric and about 30% on the other. That's the answer. Secret question. And it's up to the chat to figure out what Charlie was asking about. <laughs> and yes, the reminder is appreciated because it needs to be done. Okay. Let's see what people think is next. Battery. Um, make it do beep boops. I can do that. Uh, bathroom break. No, 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 no bathroom break yet. I don't think anyone's paying attention. It's TVC. We have to build a thrust vector control mount. <laughs> Charlie Garcia squints in lawyer. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right. <laughs> this is not appropriate for the stream, Charlie. Okay, we need to build some thrust vector control mounts. Now, we only need one here today, but we're actually going to build three because why have one when you can have three at thrice the price? So, we need some servos. Once again, we've got our QC passed 9G servos. It's quality control passed. So, how many sets of servos do we need? One, two, three. We also need some linkages and tiny little bits here. And these all come in bags. One, two, three. They have little nine volt cables because these are all the bags. This is this is what production looks like. So these are all the bags that go into the signal kits. These are all the bags with the linkages. Joey B spends a horrifying amount of time packing them. Uh, and what else do we need? We have the linkages. We need screws, but I have those. We can get them. Uh, yeah, these will work. From McMaster, we've got some screws. And um, yeah, this is uh, all we need, right? I think so. OK. Here we go. So let's start assembling some mounts. The first thing that we have to do as part of this process is to remove a bunch of support material. And I believe, let's start with the inner core, or the inner, uh, what is it? Inner gimbal, that's what it's called. Let's move some of these things over to the side so we have some more space. This space is the place for space. So now we can detach some of this support material. Oh, thank you so much, Lance. Contact the guys at Flight Test, Flight Test for legs. They use a lot of cardboard. Flight Test is awesome. I still really want to do a video with them. I feel like it would be a cool thing to try and air launch a model rocket from uh, from a model airplane with Flight Test. But uh, okay, I'm bleeding somewhere. There's blood on my hand. Where is it coming from? Unclear. Maybe it's from this. <laughs> Oops. All right. These ones were not production units for signal, um, which means they were never destined to uh, hit the boxes 
uh, or hit the hit the shelves, so to speak, because the support material is far too strong and hard to detach. More production hell. <sighs> this, this, this process is not that much fun. If you do, if you dial in your print settings, this process is really satisfying. And 90% of the time, I do that really well. Ugh. But if you mess it up, I kept these because I was like, well, I already printed them. I might as well use it for something. Should have just thrown them out. Okay, that should be enough, right? <laughs> there. One done. Awful. <laughs> Blood is from your cheek. Sue your employer. Oh my gosh. All right, here's another one. I'm gonna use my hands for this one. That is some hefty support material. Yeah, it's honestly like, wait, you bleed on your cheek? Is it actually on my cheek? What's going on here? There's not blood on my cheek. Oh, is there? What is this? Oh my gosh, there is! Hold on. I did shave. I put it in the chat. Does anyone remember this? I shaved right before the stream. And it was a bad idea because there's the blood. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me clean this up. Stand by. Okay, all cleaned up. Much better. <laughs> F in the chat for the uh, <laughs> for the blood on my cheek, Parker. So uh, you guys come here often? Okay, so once again, support material round two. Because of the geometry of this as well, it just makes it like you have to have your support material figured out in advance. Or it helps, at least. Okay, this is the way to do it, I'm realizing. That was much cleaner than last time. Okay, one more to go. Thank you for the Fs, everyone. Much appreciated. Okay, there's one piece. Yeah, now here we go. Now I'm really like figuring it out. And done. Okay, so these are the inner gimbal pieces and I'm gonna assemble this all from memory even though I do have instructions to do it. Um, so let's get started. The first step here is to attach, oh, I need to, uh, let's just, yeah, let's start with this. The first step is to attach the linkage stoppers to TBC mount. Anyone who has purchased the signal kit will recognize this process because they have done it themselves. This is the way that I like to do it. It means that you can really easily You want to strip that hole because you want easy rotation with this linkage stopper. See, I'm still not, yeah, it's still not really easy enough to rotate. So if you move it around, eventually it loosens up enough so that, yeah, much better. Okay, great. That's the linkage stopper there, then we need one of the linkages, which is this guy, this bad boy. He goes right there. And then we will use the included Allen wrench to just tighten it down real quick. And we're not gonna worry too much about where exactly it is. Now, next step, we need one of these inner gimbals. There's a lot of uh, 
Yeah, you can see why these didn't like make production. Um, they're all like all of the layer heights are kind of off and we're still figuring things out. So we'll take a pair of these servos. They are all calibrated to 90 degrees too. That's part of the manual process. There's just a lot of like ridiculous packing and stuff like that that goes into this process, which is why it felt like the right move to just take signal offline for a bit. Okay. Let me see if I can uh, answer any questions for anyone. What are we What are we doing tonight? What's going on here? Do we have questions? Do we have questions? I don't know. That's all I can think of. Should we do some trivia? That could be fun. Everyone seems to like the trivia. Okay, is this too big? I think this is, yeah, it's too big. Okay, here we go. Why you bleed a lot? I don't know, man. I don't control. I don't make the rules. <laughs> I'm just the one that bleeds. Okay, here we go. The moment of truth. Oh, it's magnetic. That's frustrating. Thanks, Elon. Or Ian. I think it's Elan. You took KSP to another level. Good work, Joe. Thank you so much. Thanks for the crabs as well. Not like that, but you know what I mean. Like the emoji crabs. This has taken a turn. Okay. There's one screw for the servo, and we need a second. <laughs> How the turntables. <laughs> second screw, here we go, will it focus? Cool, that's nice and solid in there. And then going slightly out of order, we need to thread this up through the little stopper. Hey, by the way, this is a good opportunity for me to uh, make some of that that cash money. <laughs> Why am I like this? Um, if you're interested in the thrust vector control mount and you want to build your own for your own TBC enabled projects, uh, there's a link to the STL files, which are available for purchase down below. And this is uh, the stock S the the stock TVC mount for BPS too. There's nothing that's actually modified for the Falcon Heavy. Okay, so the cable goes up through there. We do that now. The motor sleeve goes in here, and we're going to screw it in with some screws because that's how this works. Will you pass BPS on to anyone? I do not have plans to do that. I plan to hold on to it as long as I'm sane. Which honestly, like, if, if being sane is the metric, maybe I don't have too long left. But no, I have no plans to do that. So one of the good things about manufacturing in PLA and just sort of thermoplastics is you can over tighten screws to strip them and basically turn the PLA into a bearing. Mind you, it's not a very good one, but it's certainly good enough for model rockets. There we go. And now, it, it very freely rotates, where before it was just slightly stuck. Now it very freely rotates. There's only a slight amount of play in there, but otherwise it's pretty tight. So we can take this linkage stopper now. I'm going to count, oh, ouch, the, the screws, that's the only downside. Uh, the screws get very hot. All right, so here we go. One, two, and three holes from the center. Insert the linkage stopper. I keep burning myself on these screws. They heat up quite a bit. Let's undo the linkage here and center this. This is great. 
center this and tighten it down. Okay, let's give it let's get it much more tight because we can just calibrate our way out of the rest of this stuff. A spider in the TBC mount? No, there's not. Oh my gosh, never scared me like that again. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Who said that? There's a spider inside the tube. There's not a spider. It kind of looks like it, but it's just a little glob. Does it really look like... Oh yeah, it does look like it, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. It is not a spider. Oh my god, I really thought it was for a sec. <laughs> got him! Y'all got me good, though. That's true. All right, next step is the outer gimbal. Crunch. Now that comes out really cleanly. Look at that. See, this part was much better calibrated. Obviously, this isn't great, but, you know. I actually made it to a stream. Woo! Yeah, I feel bad that I stream mostly at night where I am, uh, or mostly in the evening, but it just is, like, how things end up working out. Um, I was on calls for, like, six hours today. Maybe not six, but it, definitely a solid four hours of calls today. It's a lot. Beautiful fit. Excellent. Let's screw that down. Here come more sirens. Oh, no, those aren't sirens. I think that's just someone whistling. Okay, screw one. Joey B, ASMR. Should we do more ASMR? Leave it in the chat. What do you think? I will obey the results of the chat. Oops, that's not right. So we're going to strip these once again. And once again here. What do we got? Yes, no, no, yes, no, yes, yes, no, no, yes, yes, no. Joey, all right, here it comes. Listen, if you don't like ASMR, <laughs> you are about to be disappointed in me. That's what I'll tell you. Hi everyone, welcome to the KS, uh, this is not KSP, this is the Falcon Heavy live stream. Thank you so much for joining, my name is Joey B. Uh, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. For whatever reason, somehow my impression of ASMR is that you also have to slur your words a bit. <laughs> I want to hear how that sounded. Let's see, how did that sound? Hi everyone, welcome to the KS, uh, this is not KSP, this is the Falcon Heavy live stream. Thank you so nope, much for nope, doing enough of that. I'm done. I'm so sorry. Enough of that. I have sinned. I have sinned and I am sorry. That was not good. That was very loud and not ASMR. All right, we're almost done with this TBC mount, and then I have a question for the chat. So don't let me forget, I have a question to ask everyone. And then I think we should do some trivia. We haven't done trivia in a while. Okay, so attaching this now. It should also be noted that once, like, <laughs> this is actually a pretty slow process when I'm doing it on the stream. But generally, I can do one of these mounts every, like, 10 minutes or so. Trying to, Joey B trying to flex on his build times. Okay, so this goes here. Got the screw hole lined up. Here we go. We need the bottom part. How much mass production? That's the base. That's the best ASMR I've heard. It's really hard to get this bottom one to work. A 
especially when it doesn't cooperate. Got it. Great. That's in there nice and solid. Okay, and then we need one more linkage stopper. Linkage stopper, that's what it's called. Or no, no, we just need one more linkage. And that's this guy. It's a push rod, really. You can call it whatever you want. Um, oh, I did this wrong. Oh, can we get an F in the chat, please? Why am I like this? Okay. So this is now in here. I just, I need that F in the chat, please. I require it. Because, folks, we screwed the servo in too early. There's a process. There's an order to this. And I, I did not follow it. I should have read my own instructions. This is why you follow procedures. Okay, first you detach the servo. Then you insert the linkage. One, two, three. One, two, three, go in. Okay, great. That's the push rod in there now. And then you can insert the servo, which is now done. Okay, and now I can finally re-screw it back in. That's great. Thank you for the Fs in the chat, much appreciated. All right, let's screw the servo in again. Then we need this guy. Screw it in once more. Oh, hey, thank you, Charles. Hi, do you know why two-stage model rockets have so low max altitude? Uh, I'm not sure if that's really backed up by anything. Two-stage model rockets have... I mean, that's not like a general thing. I think if you do two stages, you usually get a higher altitude. Okay, this is a completed TVC mount. This is a completed thrust vector control mount that we can use in the center core. Now we need one more part of it here. <laughs> There's one more thing we need to do. So I have two things to ask. The first is we have one more quick step in this thrust vector control mount. I have the parts to build two more. Should we go through this process and, uh, oh, print is done, print is done. Thank you, very, every, thank you everyone. I will get the print in just a moment, but keep reminding me because I will forget. We have two more parts for two more TVC mounts. Do we build those mounts or do we move on and continue the build of the Falcon Heavy? What would you rather have happen on this stream? Would you rather me build more TVC mounts, which I don't actually need, or go and complete the Falcon Heavy? Um, continue build FH. FH please, Falcon Heavy, move on, Falcon Heavy, complete it. Send me one. <laughs> okay, everyone wants the Falcon Heavy. So we will ditch the rest of these parts for the, uh, the TVC mount. I'll put them back in their box over here. And we need one more part to the mount. And that is a TVC mount liner, um, which is just a tiny bit of cardboard tubing. Um, it's linked in the TVC files if you're interested in that. So, we're gonna cut a small length of this. Oh, wait, I don't do this yet. Because the next step also involves a knife, but it's, uh, well, <laughs> everyone who owns a 3D printer and knows that you can change designed files is going to be mad at me. But I promise, I don't care. Um, inside every motor mount is a small lip at the very top. So then when you, so that when you insert a motor, let me grab one. Hold on. Here's a spent motor. You can see it's totally inert. It's got nothing going on there. Um, when you insert a motor, it gets stuck at the very top, right at that lip. Let's zoom all the way in. Enhance! Enhance. See? See that lip there? 
So the problem is, though, that we need to actually fit two motors inside this design. One of these motors is going to be sitting sort of like this. The other one will be sitting sort of like that. And so we need two motors in here. Does everyone know what we need to do with this knife? I'll give you a hint. It starts by looking like this. Cut the lip! Should we do it? Here it comes. Oh, I don't know if I went low enough. Oh no, I'm, I'm just below the lip. Because of the boundary layers in the 3D print, it's very easy to just detach the lip. There we go. And what you'll notice is that in the last iteration of this design, you'll notice that the edge is just enhance, enhance. The edge of this is slightly rough. This is the design that flew on the last Falcon Heavy. So I did the same thing. I just cut the lip off and then I super glued the motor <laughs> into the top. <laughs> Sometimes Joey B space program be a little bit weird and a little bit sketchy. Let me just make sure that works. And now if we put a motor in it, it should slide through. Yeah, fairly freely. There we go. And so the last part here is a motor liner, but we're not going to do that just yet. Um, and the print is done. So we need to get the print and start a new one. Um, what we just printed was probably one of the side core flight computer mounts. And now we need to print the other side core flight computer mounts. So that'll be uh, the fourth set of them. And then we'll be done with those prints. Here we go. Let me get it. It's all well and good. We have another set of flight computer brackets right here. Snake, wait, snake under the printer. What do you mean there's a snake under the printer? Is this a joke? There is no way there's a snake under the printer. They're lying. There's no way. I have to check. Ah, uh, this is why you don't live stream, because people tell you you have snakes in your house, and you're like, I don't have snakes in my house. What are you talking about? There's no snake. There's no snake. Everyone who said there's a snake is banned. Don't actually do that. They're not banned. They're, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> Hey Joe, was the closed loop alignment abandoned? Thanks for the question, Jake. Um, yeah, it was abandoned. So uh, I had closed loop TVC alignment, which means I had an IMU on both the flight computer and thrust vector control mount. That is a pretty cool thing, and closed loop TVC is, is how uh, most orbital launch vehicles operate as well. You want actual feedback on where your motor is pointed. Um, what ended up happening is I realized like, for the model scale, it just wasn't worth the cost. Signal was being developed as a product, which means the uh, bill of materials and the, um, the cost to produce it were being heavily considered. And so if I could save my, you know, save money, uh, that's a good way to do it. And it also saves a lot of complexity in terms of wiring. Um, so yeah, it did work. It was good, but it also like, it wasn't really worth it at the model scale. TNT outside your window. What is that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I kind of like this meme. Like, I kind of like the meme where you just say that something exists that doesn't actually exist just to, like, get me. But <laughs> I also kind of don't. 
You, you smell me? You smell me, boys? Who am I? Okay. Here are some TVC cables. These are just servo extension cables. Hey, Joe, how many hours have you on that printer at the moment? Philip, that is a good question. Do you know if I can find that out in the statistics of the printer? I probably can. I would estimate on the order of at least 1,000. Um, it's been printing quite a lot in the last year or so. So um, anyway, these are, print, these are TVC extension cables. Now, part of the process for building Signal R2 kit, um, and specifically the thrust vector control mount, is to label all of your cables. This is a really good idea, and I recommend you do it if you're building uh, a thrust vector control mount so that you don't accidentally reverse anything. Um, I don't know if Robert Cook is watching. Rob Cook is another guy who does thrust vector control with model rockets. He had a flight fail recently where things were just, it was literally just wired backwards. And so labeling your cables helps a lot to, uh, to, to minimize that. So we have a Y right here. What you'll notice is that this says Y, and this guy right here says X. And so these are our axes. Um, now, in most aer aerospace vehicles, you actually will find a uh, Y and Z, and then X is the roll, um, but I'm too far in at this point to change it. <laughs> I think at some point I'll probably switch over to the proper uh, notation. Anyway, Y. So I'm, I'm just labeling the text right here. Oops. And I'll label it on the other side as well. Y. And then X on this side. So here we go. X. Ba -ba -da, and then one on this side as well. X. OK, great. Now we do something that's kind of funky. Um, so the Y, this is not the funky part, by the way. You make sure that all of the leads connect together. So orange goes to white, red goes to red, brown goes to black. You connect these leads right here, Boop, snaps in, nice and solid. And we'll do the same with this cable. On the X, orange goes to white, red goes to red, brown goes to black, and boop, there we go. And now, the other thing that I didn't have to do, because these are pre-labeled cables, um, is that the X and Y on here match the X and Y up top. So now, these servo extensions are properly labeled. I'm going to take the X cable, I'm going to take the slack out of the X cable, because you'll notice one of them is in tension um, before the other. So you take the slack out of that cable so that they both become tensioned at the same time, and that if you were to pull on these cables, you wouldn't put uh, extra torque on just one, or extra force on just one, you'd, you'd sort of try to um, like even out your stresses a little bit. And then I'm going to wrap a bunch of tape around it so that even if we pull on it really hard, they don't come undone. This is important to do, and it has prevented TBC jams, and it's just a good idea. I've had several flights fail really early on in the BPS program. It hasn't happened for ever because I because of this, but um, you want to make sure you prevent TBC jams, and so making sure there's no slack at the no slack at the bottom here is an important part of that. Okay, so then this is going to run up through the airframe, and it's going to go to our Falcon Heavy center core flight computer, which is right here. This is a messy desk right now. I think we should probably clean up at some point. And if I connect the X and Y servos to their respective ports, so let's thread them up through the FC here. Um, the X and Y, make sure the cables are oriented correctly with the white on top. And they're going to go down in to this. Perfect. OK, so these are plugged in now. And if we turn it on, here's how you can check. There's a secondary check for orientation with the Signal R2 kit. Um, this is something that I think has prevented probably a lot of failures. Um, you want to make sure, well, at least for me, it has prevented failures. Because every now and then, you'll wire something up, and it'll be wired wrong. And then your flight will fail, and you'll be like, why did it fail? And then you'll realize you just plugged things in backwards. So 
what I've done is part of the startup procedure for every signal kit um, has a specified direction that the motor is supposed to go to. So when you um, have the signal computer facing you, first of all, the stars must be aligned. There are two stars here, one, two, and two stars here, one, two, and then two stars here, one, two. All of the stars on the rocket must face the same direction. If you build your rocket like this, it won't work. So when this is in the correct orientation, the mount at startup will actuate in this direction. It'll go to this direction, not this one, not this one, not that one. So if I put it here, and then we enter startup, what you'll see is that the mount actuates and goes over there, it goes to this direction. I'll put it in the center so we can definitely see it. Um, here's the centered position on the mount. And then if I've done everything right, it'll move toward that direction. So once again, that should be up this way. Oh, hold on, that didn't look correct. Let me try that one more time. That looked wrong, which is good to know. Oh, no, that's correct. This is hard to figure out. Okay, hold on, let me try that one more time. So it should go this way on this axis and this way on this axis. So if we put them opposite, that way and that way, they should be opposite angles as you tilt them. Here we go. Wait, no. I'm spending so much time to prove this. I know what it is. <laughs> yes, that's the correct direction. It's up and to the right. Here, should we test it? Oh, this is a dangerous game with the phone. <laughs> I am inviting chaos into my life by putting my phone on stream. Oh boy. Uh, all right. Maybe I should put it in Do Not Disturb, but for now, let's just take a little look here. We've got the signal app. There's more sirens. I hate the sirens. Okay, so we've got the signal app here, and if I refresh and go into signal R2, ooh, the, the shutter speed's off. There, 50 should help. Yeah. If I go into signal R2, I'm connected to this computer right now. So these are all live sensor readings. Um, and if I go to TVC, or no, if I go to system prefs, I can test the TVC system. I can also test the buzzer or the LED. Yeah, there we go. And I didn't even get any crazy notifications about crazy emails during that process, which is to me very impressive. And frankly, uh, a miracle. So this is all set. This is ready to go inside of a rocket. Um, the only thing that we're missing is the proper uh, motor setup for this. And I don't think we're going to do that right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prep that on another day because that takes a lot of time and I want to focus really hard on it. Um, so we're not going to do that now. We'll just put it inside the airframe and then we'll deal with it in a little bit. Um, Speaking of the airframe, though, we have repairs to make. Should we make the repairs? I feel like we have to. Here's what we're going to do. Oh my gosh, we're going up in views. Well, let's, let's make the views drop really quick. And I know a great way to do that. We're going to go to a quick just several minute inter intermission because I have to go to the bathroom. Um, I don't have any tea to get, but um, I also need to get all the materials to start repairing the center core. So um, when we come back in just a few minutes, don't go away. If you go away, I promise you'll regret it for the rest of your life. I can't tell you what will happen if you go away, but I promise you it'll be horrible. You'll hate it, okay? Don't go away. Goodbye!
it's me, Joey B, back again. I left the audio on. Okay, let's go back to the workbench. That shot was very hard to get. I wonder if anyone could see it. <laughs> volume down. <laughs> Red man, not, real man, not cow, said volume down. And they knew. <laughs> he turned into a sofa. Yeah, I was in the mirror. I could tell that I was in the mirror during the shot, and I was like, well, it's probably still worth it. But I did give it away a little bit. That was a very difficult shot to get. I had to get, I had to stand on the desk for it. I think the next time what I'd like to do is straddle the computer and then just like lean over like that and go totally head first. Um, okay. <laughs> um, can I come and watch one of your tests? I live in Knoxville. Hey, that's not too far away. Um, so right now, most of the launches are private. Um, I try to keep it that way just because it helps me focus on um, making sure that I do everything right and that I follow the checklist. So I'm sorry to disappoint for now. Um, right now we just try to keep it to a minimum. I will do a couple more public launches this summer. Um, so stay tuned to like the BPS pages. We'll, we'll probably announce something like that, but right now they're all private. Okay. Um, so the next step here is that we need to repair the center core. And what I'm about to put in front of the camera is dis it's disappointing, uh, to say the least. What is that at the bottom right? Oh, it's the printer. I obviously didn't align it very well. Hold on, sorry about that. Let me go fix that. Okay, how's that? Is that a little bit better? That's a little better, but we could probably still go up just a bit. Okay. Yes, that is the printer. We are printing, um, what are they called? Little mounting brackets for the airframe. But what we're here to do right now. Okay. So here's the thing. Let me preface this a little bit. The center core of the Falcon Heavy, I'd like to count the number of times that the center core of the Falcon Heavy has flown before I actually show you what it looks like. Because then you will understand a little bit more why it is so damaged. A T-Rex just ran by. Sean, look me in the eyes. I know that is not true. If you're gonna, if you're gonna call out stuff, you have to make it realistic. So you have to be like, I mean, you can't do the spider because we already did the spider one, but you have to be like, there are ants crawling all over your printer. But at, the, at this point now, I won't even believe that. Okay. The Falcon Heavy center core has flown once in early April. It has flown once for the FHCC test, which is on this channel. It has flown once for the uh, Signal R2 user error test. It has flown once for the model rocket with paratrooper flight. Um, it has flown once for the, did it fly any other times? Oh my gosh, it flew three times with the G8. Um, <laughs> one of those is on this channel, the other two were failures. Um, hold on. So three times with the G8 is I think six. It flew once with the Falcon Heavy booster test. It flew, it static fired once when Vice was here. It flew with the actual Falcon Heavy. So this thing has flown nine times, and these are made out of cardboard, which means every time it hits the ground, it gets a little bit more damaged. And so that is why when I put this on here, you will understand how it is so beat up. You can see it is a nightmare. Oh my goodness, Aaron, Christmas in July, I need a Signal R2. <laughs> Aaron, I think we will do a second round of the Signal R2 computers, maybe this fall, so stay tuned. Um, thank you <clears throat> so much for the super chat, by the way. That's a, that's a pretty generous one. So, um, yes, it's quite damaged. It's quite bad on the inside, you can see as well. Um, it's all beat up and, uh, yeah. What we need to do is just make sure that the bottom of it is mostly flat. And in order to do that, um, I need a couple of things. Let me go grab something from over here. Okay, 
So this is a pretty standard body mount for a set of landing legs. This body mount holds landing legs. It also holds the vehicle down when it has launch clamps. Um, and it attaches to the bottom of the vehicle to strengthen the bottom of it on impact. When I slide it on, you can see that these holes line up with the mount. They're all basically where they need to be. And what I want to do is get a sense for exactly where I can place reinforcements along the side on the outer part of this. So I'm going to grab a pen. That's not a pen at all. Um, I thought I had, oh yes, this is it. It's like a thin tip pan. pen. Why not replace the whole lower body tube? You know, I could totally do it. But I won't. Because <laughs> I think I'm still convinced we can get at least one more flight out of this. And body tubes are not expensive, so that is not a good reason. But I don't care. Okay, there we go. Nice and light mark. Just trying to see exactly where this guy is going to show up here. And then we can reinforce anywhere above that. Hey, Joe, what are we going to reinforce with? I can't even speak. Hey, Joe, what are we going to reinforce with? Uh, great question. The answer to that is extra body tube. So this is what a brand new body tube looks like. It's much nicer. It is not damaged at all. And, well, it's just very nice. It's nice to work with. And... That's it. I'm not saying anything of value here. There's a B. There's not. <laughs> okay. Remember how, hey, public service announcement. Remember how earlier we talked about how to not kill a meme and how to kill a meme means overdoing it? Don't overdo the there's bugs on you meme. You got to be really careful with that one because I catch on quick, at least for that one. I don't catch on quick for many things, but that's one that I do. All right, so what I want to do is just get a rough sense. Oh, I know how I'm going to do this. Hold on. Let me move a couple of things around. These are going to go over here. This stays. These go over here. This goes in two BPS rocket cradles. And these, here we go. This is exactly what I want. I need to blow my nose, hold on. This is so great. This is great stream material. I'm so glad you're all here to listen to that. <laughs> Are you playing KSB tonight? Lambert, I am. I am playing KSB tonight, it should be fun. I think we will probably try to go to Duna. Um, we'll see though. Okay, so what I want to do is just find out the exact right amount here. And that feels just about right. That feels a little bit, a little bit much. Maybe like, yeah, like that. And I think we're going to go most of the way around the airframe. Let's just get a small ring right around the bottom. And then we're going to glue it in segments. Um, it may not make much sense, like what I'm doing right now, but I promise it will shortly. It will make more sense um, as time goes on. Thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you for the super chat. OK, so we're just making small cuts in this. Um, does anyone have any questions? I know every time I say this, I, uh, I get too many questions, but if you have questions, put them in the chat, and I will try to answer some more. We should really do... Okay, nope. This is going to be the last round of questions, at least for a while, because next up, we should really do trivia. And I think what I'd like... To, okay, I'll, we'll talk about trivia after I answer a couple of questions. All right, you are yellow. Why? I'm yellow because the white balance on this camera is off, so I had to like shift the hue. It won't, OBS won't, me, won't let me do any kind of like fancy color fixing stuff. 
So I have to I had to shift the whole hue toward like either purple or green. And it makes like this drill is orange. See it here? It's orange in this camera, and it's it's kind of I guess it's less orange. Well, it's a little orange here. The colors are just slightly off. Um, all right. Um, what music do you listen to? I love progressive house with like either little, little, very few lyrics or um, lyrics that are really repetitive. Um, and I love that because it helps me code. It's like, it's like a hack for my brain. Okay, what else? What do you use to, ho to host your website? This is not sponsored, but I would absolutely accept a sponsorship because I love them. Squarespace, um, like the best customer support out there. Joey B, please fix your Falcon Heavy stage separation struts. They are not technically correct. You have support struts. You have, yours have support struts and the real ones don't. Look up Falcon Heavy booster separation system, hashtag BPS. Um, I don't care too much about what the actual one has. Mostly what I'm concerned about is whether mine will work, and that's what my decisions are based off of. And so uh, modeling everything in the real scale exactly as it is at the model scale uh, doesn't really, not all of the mechanics scale down. I'm new here. How long have you been doing model rockets? Well, first of all, Bailey, welcome. Second, um, I have been building model rockets like casually. <laughs> Since I was a kid, uh, like most folks get into model rocketry when one of their parents is like, hey, let's make a model rocket, or it's like a school project or something. Um, and so I did a couple of those, but I never got super serious about it until 2015. Um, I saw some of the grasshopper tests from SpaceX and was like, oops, time to do that. Um, Joey B, are you making a KSP live stream today? Yes, I am. Please notice me. Okay. Hi, Holden Bennett. Um, is this your day job? If so, what did you do before this? Crab X Core. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, this is my day job. And before that, I did uh, wedding videography and music videos, mostly music videos near the end. Um, and then before wedding videography, I was mostly a student at the Berklee College of Music. And before that, in high school, I had a job at Coldstone Creamery. Should we sing a song? I sang for tips at Coldstone Creamery. I wonder if this affects monetization, if it will get picked up by a recognition algorithm for like Melody. Maybe it will. Hmm. So Coldstone, when they do all of their songs, when, uh, when Coldstone makes all of their songs that the scoopers are supposed to um, sing when they get tipped, they're all like parodies of other songs. And now I recently thought about this, like I wonder about the legality of singing those. Cause you have to have to pay ASCAP or CSAC for one of those for like the rights to even parody them. Um, all right, should we do it? So let's pretend that these two pencils are ice cream scoops. Cause they don't use traditional scoops. They use like spades at Cold Stone. And so you go, Cold Stone, here at Cold Stone, we're a super scooper family. When you eat our ice cream, we will sing in perfect harmony. And they had a bunch of other ones. They had uh, covers, I mean, I worked there a while ago, but they had covers of like Britney Spears and a bunch of pop songs. Um, <laughs> it's pretty good. Honestly, that's like the most fun I've had at any job. Almost including the Rockets. The Rockets are pretty fun, but Cold Stone was like, awesome. That was my first job. <laughs> it's a cover. It's fine. Um, print came off build plate. No, it didn't. Okay. Hold on. William Falconer Beach. That is a good prank. That was good. Clap it up, everyone. Claws up for William. That was, that was well done. <laughs> good prank, buddy. Okay, I think for this, I want to start over here. Yeah. Okay, I work at, I'm going to work at Coldstone now. Um, will you consider doing a Delta Four Heavy? Probably not, um, just because it's a similar, like, design at this scale. Um, I would rather do something like a, one of the Long March rockets with the four boosters, that would be cool to do. Um, 
Someone recently did a Delta Four Medium with one SRB on the side. Um, you can look him up on Twitter. He's Guy Gelhausen. Someone can probably link it too. He, it's a, he's an architect though, so he pays attention to detail. And uh, man, it's a beautiful model. He did such a good job with that. Um, and the TVC system totally worked with asymmetric thrust, um, which was the coolest part for me, at least. Okay, now I need to get some glue. I have to say, can we also get claws up in the chat for the chat itself? Um, I'm so impressed that people like are sticking around for this. I didn't think it would be that exciting to most folks but it seems I am wrong. All right, Thrusty McThrust face fell down. Yep, that's another good one. <laughs> that's another good one, Jack. So the approach to fixing this thing, this is called the zappa gap approach because what we end up doing is we add just a tiny amount of weight to the rocket by dousing it in cyanocrylate adhesive. Is that the pronunciation? I always get it wrong. Um, yeah, cyanocrylate. Um, and that's just like super glue. Make sure this comes off. Okay, great. That should be good. <laughs> Lobster. <laughs> Thanks, Parker. So yeah, the way this works is we just dump a bunch of glue on here. And I'm already off to a bad start, hold on. It's not coming out the right part. There we go. Okay. We just need a bunch of glue in this area. And then I'm going to, oh, yes. Can I help you? He says, I didn't get that. Hey, should we do a new meme? Hey Siri, can you change my name to Big Papa? You can change your name in the contacts app. Or if you'd like me to call you something else, just say change my nickname. Hey Siri, change my nickname to Big Papa. You would like me to call you Big Papa? Yes. Okay, Big Papa it is. <laughs> Woo! Joey B, Big Papa in the house. Claws up for Big Papa, everyone. Uh, TDC says, video about finding slash simulating PID values. Love ya. Thank you so much, both for the super chat and for the love. Um, so there's this great video on PIDs. I'm gonna link it right now. Um, I don't know if this is exactly what you're asking. I think you're mo mostly asking about uh, simulating PIDs. Um, but regardless, this will help. PID controller. Here it is. This is this is hands down. I think the best explanation I found of PID controllers. It's in the chat now. Um, so, for simulating though, you want to you can do a couple of things. You could probably build a simulation based on physics and um, I'm learning about something called LTI right now, which is linear time invariant systems. And if you can linearize your system, which means you assume, um, it's very hard to describe. If you can describe the system that you are attempting to control in a linear way, which means known input to known output and totally known system, which is a not, not a real world occurrence, mind you. Like, Linear systems basically don't exist in the real world. And there's a quote from, I believe, Richard Feynman talking about linear systems, which is um, the reason that linear systems is so, linear systems are so important is that we can solve them. Um, so they're very easy to solve. They're very easy for, I don't know, you can make a Python simulation or you could do it maybe in like Mathematica or you could do it, the way I do it is, is using MATLAB or Simulink. Um, and through that, you can generate a transfer function. You can find the poles and the zeros of your system. So that's where your system is the most stable and the least stable. Um, I hope that helps. Super glue fell over. See, Aiden, this is, 
That's a pretty good meme. That's a pretty good meme, except that the super glue is right next to me. I'm gonna give that meme a, a six and a half out of 10. <laughs> Joey B meme review. <laughs> All right. The camera on the white, on the right went black. Did it actually? No, it didn't. Okay. <laughs> Ask Siri to beatbox. Should I? I don't, I don't really want to do that. Unless the chat wants me to. If the chat, the chat sort of decides what happens during these streams, that's kind of how this works. I obey the chat. Okay, this, yeah, this is all like crunched. It's good that I'm fixing this. This was the thing I was most worried about when prepping for the next FH launch, is just this core. Got him! <laughs> oh my god, the printer failed. No, I can hear it. It's fine. Okay, this keeps falling. Um, all right, so we just need to put a bunch of glue here. So what I'm doing, I think it's probably clear, but if it is not, what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to work this super glue into the cardboard. And we're like infusing the cardboard with super glue. Um, and then I'm straightening out the cardboard back to its original shape. And then it will, the cardboard will hold its position again because the super glue is holding it. <laughs> Joe's house is going to catch fire uh, and not look because he doesn't think we're being truthful. <laughs> Spider on your shoulder, Joey B. I have to check, but I, I did doubt it. <laughs> All right. Is this your idea of composite material? Philip, yes it is. <laughs> That's a good comment. It is a composite material. Does this mean I can say I build rockets out of composite materials? Arsenio says, that face when Joey B didn't include Sidewinder, Creative Missile Development, and China Lake on the books list. <laughs> what up, Arsenio? Are you here? Is Arsenio here? All right. We are making our way around the tube. That was the hardest part right there. We're basically done with that. Parker says, nah, just in Discord. Parker, can you get Arsenio in here? Get him in the chat. Bring him for the memes. Okay, now the next step involves sandpaper. Because we have all of this paint here. This paint is a little bit smooth, and I don't want it to be smooth. So if we sand it down, oh, more stuff. <laughs> Joey said, go to chat for memes. <laughs> All right, so I'm sanding down, what I'm doing right now is I'm sanding down the area that I want to coat with super glue and then reinforce with another piece of tubing. And the sand, this not the sand itself, but the sanding down of this tube, audio down, no audio, really? No, oh my God, is that real? Hold on. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> that was the best one yet. All right. That was the best one yet, for sure. That was a really good one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm proud of y'all. That was a good meme. Okay, and I'll, I'll just... Uh, I'll probably just sand this part here. <laughs> Who am I? All right.
Okay, so now we're gonna attach this ring here. Oh, Arsenio's here. Print is done. No, it's not. Joey boy, it me. Hi, Arsenio. Everyone, claws up for Arsenio, please. Okay, we're sanding this over. I understand this part is a little bit boring, but I don't know, man. This is the reality of the, the Falcon Heavy, is it, it'd be complicated like this. It'd also be like ridiculous looking. So what we are going to do is start with small sections and I'm going to just douse them in super glue. Way too much super glue. Here we go. So section one, like that. And I'm gonna squeeze it with my fingers up against this piece of cardboard. And it's gonna pretty, now the, the coolest thing about this super glue, this is cyanocrylate adhesive once again. The coolest thing, to me at least, is that this is an exothermic reaction, which means it releases heat once the bond really forms at the chemical level. Um, so it's not hot yet, but it will get hot. <laughs> it's not hot yet. Oh, it's heating up. So it's an exothermic reaction, which is pretty cool. Uh-oh. Is this going to work? It should be fine. Yeah, this should be okay. It's a little tilted, but it should be all right. The chat is heating up. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Now we will move on to the next section. Here we go, and next section of the tube. And so by just like making all of this stuff conform to the outer ring, the outer ring has not been deformed by hitting the ground about a thousand times. So basically it strengthens it. It's like reinforcements. Um, I mentioned earlier that I wanted to do a uh, 66 millimeter rocket instead of a 74, and that's gonna be the new scout vehicle. It's gonna be a little bit thinner. Um, that one you basically, you have to build reinforcements in if you want it to um, hold its shape over the long term. Many people are leaving. I'm losing subs. <laughs> Is this another joke? I have to know. <laughs> How many subs have I lost? I think I've lost positive number. Okay, hold on. I have, uh, oh, I caught the print being done. I caught it before anyone said it. I, I think actually someone may have said it before, but the print is done. Okay, so here's the thing, folks. Um, we now have the center core computer ready, and we now have, because the printer finished, we have the side cores, um, the side core computer mounts are ready too. So here's my question. What should I print next? And I don't actually have to print anything. So you should, you should send me something on Thingiverse for me to print and I'll print it. How's that sound? I don't know if that's actually fun for people, but if you can find something fun, I would rather it be fun and not like useful. Fun or silly. Something like that. Send me something on Thingiverse. <laughs> All right. How do you simulate your rocket for PID gains? Asked uh, TDC. Uh, I use MATLAB and Simulink. I developed a, well, it's not, it, developed is a really strong word. There's a block in there that does pretty standard equations of motion, rotation, uh, translation, stuff like that. Um, you feed the inertia of the rocket into, the mass moment of inertia into the simulation. And then you feed the, um, 
you feed the PID controller into there and the thrust curve, and then you do vector resolution to find the actual forces on the bottom of the airframe. You multiply that by the uh, moment arm. So you convert newtons to moments on the vehicle. Um, then you run it through that inertia block, you run it back into the PID, and you basically have a whole closed loop, and you observe it um, through some type of plot or scope uh, in Simulink. They call it scopes. And then if you run that simulation enough times and um, just observe the response, you sort of get a good feel for where the PID gain should be sitting for each flight. Joe put a Tesla Roadster in the Falcon Heavy. I will. I will do that. 3D print the Dream Chaser capsule. <laughs> Elon just ran behind you with a flamethrower. That seems unlikely to me. All right. What date do you launch? I don't have a specific date just yet. I'm sorry to disappoint. Um, I launch when it's ready, which should be sometime next week. Undetermined exactly what day, though. And honestly, like, there's still a chance that something in testing will not, you know, return a good result or... Um, I don't know, I'll mess something up or I'll drop the rocket on the ground. I don't know. All sorts of things happen that, that can delay things. Print a crab. <gasps> yes, print a crab. Okay, I will print a crab. Um, so I need one of the mods to leave a link in the chat for the crab. Um, if you can find a crab to print, I will print it. But I think most people do not have link capabilities except for the mods. Okay, and this is done, by the way. It took a long time, but it's done. Um, and now, even though this is super flexible at the bottom, we should have a much better attachment point here. Oof, this is rough. Yes, much better. And the holes line up really well too, which is great. Okay, so the bottom of our, our rocket has been fixed. It's a little bit straighter now. Um, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's it's definitely better than it was. Okay, uh, Parker has sent us a crab, ladies and gentlemen. Let's let's take a look. Let's see what we've got here. Crab. Oh yeah, I love this. This is like the crab directly out of the crab rave. <laughs> okay, folks, we're printing the crab. We're doing it. We're doing the crab. So, how do we do this? First, let me clear the printer and get the SD card out. We will do the crab and then we have to assemble the side cores. thing here. Sign out. Let's do that. Or wait, no, this. Here we go. Guess with that. That's what I want. Um, all right. So let's do this. Oh, I also have to... Hold on. <laughs> Stand by, everyone. We're getting there. Let me move back to this. And let me, let, let me uh, get to the desktop screen. And instead of the KSP window, because we're not playing KSP right now, I'll do a display capture. And it'll look like that. OK, great. And then I'll move this over here. And then I'll close out of Arduino. <laughs> Sorry, Arsenio. Um, and then what I just have to do here is sign in to make sure that I can see the chat, because right now I can't see anything in the chat. So it could be chaos. Who knows? <laughs> Stand by. 
We have to go to the channel. My goodness, this is a mess. All right, there we go. Let me just pop out the chat here so that I can see it, and then we will look at the Thingiverse file. We'll do some live browsing on the internet, which is always a good idea, and it never goes wrong, ever. If I close this down, and then scroll down a little bit. Okay, great. All right, three, two, wait, hold on. Um, three, two, one, transition. Oops, hold on. Where's the, uh, where's my webcam? There I am. All right, hi everyone. Welcome. <laughs> so Parker sent something, um, and I have to find that link one more time. Crab. It's this. This is what we're going to print today. <laughs> this is the crab that we're going to print. And, uh, yeah, it should be great. It looks like people have had some success with it. This person printed one. Um, these people printed one. Yeah, this looks like it should be, it should be a good idea. Um, I don't know if I need a raft. I probably want to have a raft for this to actually make it work really well. Um, and the legs mean that with a raft, it should probably be fine. Yeah. Okay, download all files. Ooh, Dropbox. No thanks. Crab.zip. <laughs> okay. And now it's going to open up Simplify 3D, which is the uh, slicer tool that I use. Um, Simplify 3D is amazing. It's such a good slicer. The only thing that you should know is that it is also expensive. It costs money and it's not cheap. However, you have tons of control over every single part of how your print comes out. Um, so I can change my infill, I can change all of the layer settings. Someone with a lot of bass going by my apartment now. Let's, let's move it down to like 90 here. Um, and then for support, I am going to generate support material. And somewhere here, there's probably a raft setting. Um, additions. Use raft. Yeah, raft layers, I probably only need two. Um, and we'll do three. I want, to, I want to be really safe about this. We'll do three raft layers. And then when I prepare to print, it will actually... Um, go through and hold on yeah it'll go through and it'll show me how the print is going to show up when it actually happens and i can go by layer layer by layer and see how the print is actually going to form so we've got this raft here one two three and then we start to build up from there boy it's going to be really hard to remove that support material so you know what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back here I'm gonna go into the support material and I'm gonna change the upper vertical separation layers to three and the lower to three. And this is gonna make it really easy to remove and hopefully not destructive. Um, yeah, this should be good. This is a really detailed model too. So prepare to print. Let's do it one more time. Yeah, there we go. This is exactly what I want in my life right now. I think the claws are gonna be Excuse me. The claws are going to be pretty hard to resolve here. I'm not sure that they'll really come out, but it's also a fairly small print, so I think we'll be okay. All right, and then the last thing that I want to do is I want to move it around on the print bed so that it comes right up to the front because that's sort of where I've, I've uh, placed all my prints so far. Here we go. And sliced. Okay, great. So now I'll save the tool paths to a disk. And let me just move this over here. Crab one. Okay, now I can eject the SD card and then move back over to the workbench. All right, here we go. It's time to print the crab.
okay, printing. <sighs> All right, here we go. We're printing. <laughs> okay, chat, I gotta go sleep. Good night, Arsenio, thanks for stopping by. All right, here we go. We have to get back to work, everyone. So, we finished the center core. Um, this looks pretty good. It's a little bit stuck, but otherwise that is all set. And now what we will do is insert the flight computer and all of the TVC hardware in there. All right, how's everyone doing? Are we still all good? Everyone's still feeling like this stream is going well? Unclear, maybe? All right, so first, the flight computer goes in. And you know what? I think the easier way to do this is TVC mount first. So TVC mount goes in here and slides down through the airframe. Like that. Oh, and the other thing we need to do, I always forget about this. I need to thread these cables up through the top Uh, I need to thread these TVC cables up through the top here and then secure them rubber, with a rubber band so that they don't fall back down. This is like a kind of important thing to do. It just helps uh, continue to prevent jams. So here we go. Just roll those down and that should be just about right. Okay, so then the flight computer goes inside the airframe and it all slides down until we finally get the TVC mount in here. Okay, and that's lined up and we can screw it in. Oops, there goes a the screw. One. And then we'll do two. We're almost there, folks. Two. And three. And finally, four. We should do, uh, the crab is, is, is printing. It's just heating up right now. Four. We should do some questions here so it doesn't get too stale in the chat. <laughs> so what questions can I answer for folks? Let's do some more. Oh, no, 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 no. No more questions. No more questions. We're doing trivia now. So, let's start out with some trivia. What trivia do I know? I think the best way to usually do trivia, where did that screw go? Why don't people ask me trivia? <laughs> I don't know if that's really a good idea. See if you can find the limits of my knowledge and the, uh, the spoiler alert is that it's not very hard to find them. So ask, ask me some trivia. All right, this is uh, securing the flight computer into the FH airframe for the CC, the center core. And now we have an integrated center core, at least the bottom part. So if I turn it on. Yeah, that's correct. Great. All right. That looks good. Let's do some trivia. And then we need to do the, uh, we'll start with the left booster. <laughs> trivia with the answers 100% wrong. Who was the third person on the moon? Oh man. <sighs> I gotta say, I, I do not actually know. I did learn, however, Buzz Aldrin was the first to pee on the moon. Good job, Buzz. All right, so we're, we're still putting things together here. Let's put the signal flight computer. This is for the left booster, hence the L right there. Take the L. Um, what was the first video game to be played in space? I don't actually know that too. Oh no. Okay, I really don't know these answers. This is not good. Oops. <laughs> Um, this is a, this was a bad idea because I'm not great at trivia. I'm just going to pick ones that I do know. 
Oh, no. Uh, what did the third man on the moon say? Oh, wait. This might help me answer it. Isn't it whoopee that might be one small step for Neil, but it's a big one for me? Is that correct? That's one of the flights, but I don't know if that's the third one. You smell me? It is? It is, Josh? Is that correct? How many spiders under your printer bed? Okay, hold on. I'm having a hard time getting this to stay here. All right, we're printing. The printing looks to be going well. I didn't put any um, uh, rubbing alcohol on it. Sometimes that helps. Okay, that's good. Let's screw in one of the bottom ones. All right. First video game in space, Asteroids. Oh, Gene Cernan, nice. All right, so listen up. I'm doing trivia for you now because I'm very bad at trivia. <laughs> um, these will be pretty easy, I think, but um, I'm gonna do them anyway because it won't be easy for some folks, but it will be very easy for others. Here's the trivia. I'm gonna turn on live chat and we're gonna see who gets it. There are no prizes other than I will read off your name and, and say you got it, but that's it. Ready? Here's the trivia. Oh no, there's another siren coming. I hear it. <laughs> there were two program alarms that happened during the lunar descent of Apollo 11. What were the numbers of both program alarms? There goes the siren. That's a lot of fun. 1201 and 1202. Master Bren, 74, you got it. Congratulations. 1201 and then 1202. All right, let's try this. Um, for thermal management in space, many spacecraft, but definitely also the Apollo missions, did what type of maneuver on their way to the moon? You have to use the funny colloquial term for it. What type of maneuver were they doing on the way to the moon? Okay, so Texas Trim 95 says rotate like a barbecue, which is pretty much correct. So I'll award a half a point for that. But then ARRO, Astronomical Research and Rocketry Organization, says barbecue roll. And I think that's really what they referred to it as, which is the barbecue roll. <laughs> All right, I'm doing the same process with the battery, by the way, as last time. So we're going to mark the negative terminal. Okay, what else? Um, I think this is publicly available information. Hold on. I'm like 95% sure. I'm pretty sure I saw a flight software presentation. I will ask this answer and if no one gets it, then I won't give the answer. <laughs> I'm like 90% sure that it is. It's public, okay. What operating system does the Falcon 9 run on its flight computers? If any, does it, does it run an operating system? And if so, what is it called? Oh, okay, yep, no, everyone has it. It's Linux. And I don't know if Red Hat is the specific blend of, of Linux, but it's definitely Linux. It's probably also real-time Linux, um, but I actually don't know that, like, off the top of my head. Or, yeah. Okay, great. That was, that was really easy for a lot of you. Um, what? Okay, hold on. I need that. Uh, and then I need one more of these two. Stand by. Okay, let's do some more here. Oh, you can see the crab. It's taking shape. This is really great. I like the trivia. Stick around for more trivia. Let's do more. Um, okay. That's probably too hard. Let's do... Um, hmm. 
me think of more trivia here. Do you want more SpaceX trivia? I know a lot about that. <laughs> um, okay, let's do this. Okay, people want more SpaceX trivia. I'm just trying to think of the right one that's like not too hard, but also not too easy. Um, wow, I'm totally blanking on good trivia for this. This is a boring stream now. Although our view count's going up, that's incredible. We're back up to 400 now. All right, here's the trivia. <laughs> um, this one is, oh, this is a good, this is a good one. I'm pretty sure enough people know about this that it's public info. One of the things that SpaceX does that will, I think, and does prevent a lot of competitors from doing exactly what they do and succeeding is all of their infrastructure that they have built up. So that is all of their they're just, they have a lot of experience. So like you can't beat, oh my gosh, enough with the sirens. <laughs> you can't beat Tesla at Tesla because Tesla is has learned for the course of 10 years over these things. And the same with SpaceX, um, but not 10 years, it's like 15 or however many it was. So there's a, there's a file management system at SpaceX. What is it called? I'm like pretty sure that's probably. <clears throat> patents. <laughs> nope, it's not called patents. Nope. Linux? Nope. Okay, this was a good question. Someone's gonna get it. There's a file management system. There's an internal file management system at SpaceX. What is it called? Not Windows. Okay, maybe no one knows. Wow. I don't think anyone knows it. Hey, uh, is Charlie still here? It's a real quick question here. Is Charlie still in the chat? Charlie, just give me a heads up if you're still in the chat here. Charlie is gone. Okay, well, no one got it. So, let me just, let me just do a little Googling here. Let me just make sure. Um, Okay, it's definitely, oh, okay, no, someone got it, someone got it. William Falconer Beach got it, kind of got half of it, half of it. It is publicly available, I just looked it up. You can find it on like several subreddits or something like that. It's called Warp Drive, um, and I think sometimes it's just referred to as Warp. Anyway, that's what the answer was. That was a hard one. That was trouble for some folks. All right, let's do more. Let's also test its computer. This is the left booster. Cool, all right, left booster done. And now we can integrate it into the LB airframe, which is, I believe, this one here. This is the left booster airframe. It already, it already has a uh, TVC mount in it. You can see it is Toasted in there when that when that rocket gets fired on the pad. There's a lot of soot that goes just about everywhere Okay, what else should we do? Um, okay This one's probably gonna be too hard as well um, 
Let me just look it up again to see if it is a thing that exists. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be too hard. All right. Um, this is becoming boring. Yet the view count is still going up, which is surprising. I just need to do more trivia. The... All right, this one's not that hard. I feel like this is a medium one. This is more SpaceX trivia coming up. So... The question is as follows. Um, how do I ask this? How many Falcon vehicles from SpaceX, which is vehicles that have Falcon in the name, were officially planned? Now, hold on, don't answer yet. Were officially planned total. How many vehicles with Falcon in the name were planned total? And the answer is, let me just count it on my hand. Yes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> there's a lot of numbers in here. Most people are getting it. There are a lot of numbers. I think this is a good question. Keep submitting. Okay, great. The answer that most people got, and I'll see if I can find the first person that I can read who got it, is Mihai Mera. Mihai Mera. Congratulations on getting it. The answer was four. The Falcon 1, the Falcon 5, which never got built, or at least never got substantially built, um, the Falcon 9, and the Falcon Heavy. Oh, man. You know what? I wonder if the Falcon 9 Dev R counts. I don't think it counts. Um, yeah, I make the rules, and I say, I say it doesn't count. All right. Here we go. And, all right, let's do more. Um... What, okay, you have to list, I'm looking for a specific type of instrument, a specific type of instrument that is used as, as the answer for this question. It's a specific type of instrument, it's not a musical instrument, like a, like, it's like a sensor, kind of. So the Falcon 9, for obtaining orientation measurements, uses an IMU, an inertial measurement unit, and probably a few other things. But does Dragon use an IMU? Or if, if it doesn't use an IMU, or if it uses something else, what else does Dragon use? And that's for orientation and attitude control. Nope. Oh. Master Bren 74 again with the win, a star tracker. Uh, sorry, I'm just grabbing a rubber band. Stand by. Yes, Dragon uses a star tracker, um, which helps with guidance in space, because gyros drift. So you want a star tracker. All right. Um, so, let's do some more trivia here. Let me think of more things I can ask. Um, in, okay, what was, okay, here we go, really quick. What was the date that the Falcon 9 first landed back on land? Oh, Plasmanium, I think you're right. Five vehicles with Falcon 1E. Nope, you're right. I'm sorry. That is that is correct. That's my bad. December 21st, 2015. Yep. Nope, that's it. It's December 21, 2015. Anyone who answered that is correct. All 
Oh, I didn't even attach these. What, a, what the heck? Hold on. So right now I'm attaching the TBC leads. So we've got the Y and the X. If I just turn on the computer real quick, it should go, it should gimbal to this position uh, right here. Let's see if it'll focus. Okay, it should gimbal to that angle right there at startup. So here we go. Yep, there we go. Cool, so that's the left booster. And that looks pretty good. Oh, wait, hold on. We have two other things to connect here. I totally forgot about this. Now, I do think we are not going to do legs on this. I'm pretty sure we're just gonna ditch the legs for this flight. Um, and everyone can just get upset if they want, but I don't care. So the parachutes will be connected to one of these channels. We're ditching legs though, um, because it's just like, it's not, they're too heavy. This thing also has, yeah. <laughs> You're still live? I left this stream hours ago. I am still live. I'm killing it, man. All right, parachute's gonna go on Pirate Channel 2. Get a better view here. Oops, that's not great. Okay. Let's do more trivia. The trivia is good. Um, I did this one before. Well, hold on. All right, here we go. We're, we're moving on to non-SpaceX trivia. Here's the question. How many launch pads were built for the N1 rocket? The Soviet era N1 rocket. How many launch pads were built for it? Oh, and the winner is Texas Trim 95 with two. Wow, the answers are all over the place. I'm I'm like 90% sure it was two. Can someone confirm that it was two? I guess I should have looked this up before asking it as trivia. Okay, plugged in. So this is for the Pyro Channel to deploy parachutes. And now we're ready to actually put this in the airframe. That was my bad. Shouldn't have done it so soon. Okay, X and Y, and then we'll have to check orientation one more time. X and Y. And if we slide it into the airframe and I put it this way, we should see the correct orientation again. Awesome, still good. Uh, let's see, two wasn't enough though. Um, it was two, they blew up. I'm triggered. I answered. If you, I, I answered right after the winner. Okay. Ditch the engines altogether for weight reduction. I don't think I will. Okay. So right now we're bringing up the TVC cabling up through the airframe so that it can't jam and that it is basically in tension the whole time, which is good. That's a good thing. There we go. Then we'll just stuff it back in there. And maybe we'll put it up through here in the airframe. Okay. All right, next trivia question, everyone. Next trivia question. The space shuttle, the American space shuttle used what? type of representation for orientation on the vehicle. Those who know the answer will know what I'm talking about, and it may be hard for some of you who do not. Danny DeVito is not the correct answer. Oh, Parker! <laughs> Parker, with the answer, quaternion. That is correct. Quaternion representation. It's 
it's not a BPS video until Joey B mentions that he uses quaternions and thinks he's really cool for doing so. Okay, this is the left booster, and the left booster is basically done. So let's go ahead and attach the top part. Uh, which I believe is this. Yeah, here we go. You can see it says L on it. L, booster, left. And so we will later on, we will attach the proper pyro charges to this. And now let's screw these cores together for these uh, airframe sections. Uh, let me think of some more trivia here. I'm running out of trivia. <laughs> Joey B running out. Okay, this is great. So this is the left core. It's looking good. Now we need to do the right core. We're almost there, folks. Thank you so much. The patience is very, is very real. Oh, well, no, I don't have the app installed on my phone, so I can't demonstrate it. Wanted to demonstrate the roll control, but Joe, you are my real dad, says Oliver. Oliver, I have some really bad news for you about the reality of that statement, which is that I'm afraid I'm not your real dad. I'm so sorry to disappoint. <laughs> How's the crab coming? Does it look good to everyone? I, I need to go take a look at the crab. Hold on. Okay, so I have good news and bad news. The good news is that the, the crab is definitely printing. Um, the bad news is that I think we may have a leg broken off. So that's kind of where we're at right now. All right, we're moving on, folks. I cannot believe there are still this many people watching. This is incredible to me. This stuff is kind of boring. <laughs> We're moving on to the right booster of the Falcon Heavy core, the Falcon Heavy uh, model rocket, rather. So let me just snap this in, and we'll start to screw it together. Um, I need more screws for this, though. I'm running out. I think this should work. Yeah, this will be fine. I can use these, these shorter ones and not have it be a problem. Okay, so screwing the computer in. Once again, if anyone would like to be reminded of some details about the Falcon Heavy, you can find those in the description down below at bps.space slash falcon dash heavy. You got all the juicy deets there. <laughs> F in chat for the disabled crab. Oh no! Ah, oh, I installed them upside down. Hold on. F in the chat for me. Why am I like this? What have I become? Okay. Screwing it in the right way. Here we go. And here. And now the top part. <laughs> Class up for crab leg rip 2019 to 2019. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> All right, top part of the mount. Now I have just around the riverbound stuck in my head. 
Gotta be careful to not sing that, because Disney don't mess around, boy. Get that copyright claim for sure. All right. Another light bulb. Coming in hot. Pretty much everywhere, it's going to be hot. <laughs> then I don't need a jacket. Does anyone know that meme? That's an old meme. All right. So we're drawing on. There we go. Joe, are you a prog rock fan? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't listen to a whole lot of prog rock. Nothing against it, but... Not a, not a huge deal for me. Okay. Here we go. Polarity is noted on there. I need some tape to tape around the battery. And this is the last one, folks. This is the last core. So if you were thinking about leaving, uh, don't. And that's, that's, the, that's it. That's all. That's a Joey B guarantee. Don't leave. Taping it together. Battery is taped together. Once again, let's get rubber bands. It's becoming repetitive. Can someone ask me more trivia? But ask like SpaceX trivia. I know that pretty well. I'm ashamed to say I do not know enough general space flight trivia. I'm so sorry. How do you store your lipos? I store them in a fireproof bag. Um, do you drink a lot of coffee? You know what, Chris? This is a great opportunity for me to flex. I used to drink a lot of coffee, and I don't drink a whole lot, like, of coffee at least. Oh, that's a bad statement. I don't, I don't drink a whole lot of coffee these days. Um, I feel really good. Like, it sucked for the first few weeks, just like cutting it really far back. It was like two or three cups a day. And now it's back to like one and on honestly, like most days, not a whole lot. Um, I don't think I had coffee today. I do have tea with caffeine in it, though. Um, and that helps a lot, too. Because that allows you to, like, dial it in more. Okay. What do you think about Vietnam? I don't know too much about Vietnam. I know there was a war there. And I know Ken Burns has a gorgeous documentary on it, and also heartbreaking. That's... I don't have a huge opinion on Vietnam, frankly. Not the war, the place. <laughs> tacos or chicken nuggets? Tacos. Hello from Arizona. Hi, Richie. Thanks for joining. Third leg down? Uh-oh. Is the crab losing more legs? <sighs> the crab is in trouble, man. That crab. It's bad news. It's not good. <laughs> that poor, poor crab. I will love him all the same, though. I will love that crab like my own son. Okay, here we go. Test. And there we go. So, now this goes into the airframe. Oops, there we go. This is gonna go into the airframe here. We're gonna connect up these leads. Does anyone notice how I, <laughs> say, I, I like have a soundboard. There are like just a, a couple of phrases that I say. I'm kind of like a robot in that way. Like all of the things I say are like, now we're gonna do this. And then we're gonna do this. And then I say, hi folks. And, oh dear, I don't know. The Joey B soundboard. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, what SpaceX missions don't show the second stage part of the mission? Um, I can't name them, but usually it's just the national security launches and there was once a NOAA launch, which was just like an oceanic or, or Earth observation satellite that was not national security, but they didn't, somehow they like didn't get clearance to show the second stage or show the view from it. Um, I believe that's the correct answer. 
You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, Zoom is, Zoom is a national security thing, too, though. Um, uh, let's see. More trivia. I'm surprised the rocket in the background hasn't fallen. Me too, TBH. Let's get some more trivia. More more SpaceX themed trivia. I feel like I can I feel like I can adequately compete at that themed trivia. Um, I need some more screws though. Where did I put them? Huh. Screws. Where do you be? All right, this is close enough. The Island Falcon 1 launched from um, so it launched from the Kwajalein Atoll, but it actually launched from, like the specific island is Omlek, the Omlek Island. Oh! Nuts! F in the chat, please. F in the chat. Oh. F in the chat. I didn't attach the parachute lines. Ah! Why it have to be like this? Thank you for the Fs in the chat, by the way. Much appreciated. <laughs> All right. So here we go, Pyro Channel 3. Oh no, we're going on Pyro 2 for this parachute. That's Pyro Channel 2, and let's screw it in. Oops. Pyro Channel 2, and screw it in. And there we go, excellent. Okay, what was the satellite launched on the first flight of Falcon 1? It was called uh, Falcon Sat 1, and it was for the Air Force or DARPA, I think. Uh, or no, Falcon Eye, maybe? I think it was Falcon Sat 2 or something. It was one of the Falcon Sats, and you would think, like, oh, cool, it's, it's a SpaceX satellite because it says Falcon, but it's not. notification. What about? Uh, what is the Falcon 9 airframe constructed of? Good question. Uh, aluminum lithium. Okay, there we go. That goes like that. Let's just check orient orientation on these again. So if I put it this direction, we should see vector motion in this direction. Uh, hold on. We should see vector motion in that direction and no others. So if I move it down here. Oh. Oh, no, that's wrong. Wait, hold on. Something's wrong. Hold on, something is really wrong. It should go... Yeah, okay, if I go here, it should go up and here. It should go up and this way. Yeah, that's wrong. Oh. Okay, one of our servos is dead. Or not connected. Uh, so this is good. This is why we do these tests. One of the servos is disconnected. If I look down there, it does kind of seem like we're just disconnected and not dead. So let's remove the TVC mount. 
Can we get an F in the chat for the dead servo, please? All right. Thank you for the Fs in the chat. And this one. <laughs> it's Anthony. <laughs> Trivia, what is SpaceX? Anthony, thank you for the super chat. The answer is SpaceX is an orbital launch provider. <laughs> That's a fairly simple trivia question, but thank you for asking. All right, so this is probably where our problem exists, right here. I'll go ahead and unwrap this, and we should see that one of the servos is disconnected. And we can actually run a test really quick to see which one is not moving. So it's this one. The Y servo is the problem. The Y servo is the issue here. So. If I unravel this, we will find, aha, we will find, see this is the Y servo right here? This is why you label them. We will find the Y servo was just barely in there and not actually connected. So when I connect it all the way, here we go. Fixed. There we go. Let's put some new tape on there. Just refresh things a little bit. Okay. And with this round of tape, what I want to do is go all over the place with it so that we get a really good wrap of tape around there. This is a bad way to say it. Mostly what I'm concerned about is that when I pull on either one of these things, it's not going to pull loose. And that seems to be okay now. So let's put the TVC mount back in the airframe. Back in it goes. And the flight computer as well needs to go in there. First, thrust vector control mount. And we're going to line up these servo holes. Oh, oh, I just had it. I think that's it right there. And then we'll screw it back in. Is this still fascinating to people? Like, are, are people still interested in this? I know it's been very repetitive. Um, but I would, I would love to hear if, if, is this still like, this is just the reality of what vehicle integration is. It's a lot of screwing things in and realizing that something doesn't work and trying to catch your errors before you actually commit to something. All right. Where's the other one? There should be one more of a similar length. The other part of vehicle integration is just losing screws. Here it is. <laughs> losing screws and also losing your marbles. Let's fold these legs back in. These are eventually gonna have to come off. But they look good for show. Oh, thank you, Adam. Thanks for the super chat. All right. Here we go. The, uh, what is this? The left booster? This is the right booster. The right booster has proven to be problematic in integration, but I believe we've solved all of the issues and uh, we're ready to screw things in and commit. Here we go. All right. That looks good. And let's screw it in. And down here, something fell off the 3D printer. Uh-oh. I mean, the crab is just in tough shape right now, frankly. Whew. All right, the right bottom part of the booster is done. So let's see if we can uh, start connecting things up here. Now, the right booster 
Let's, uh, we don't have to attach any of the parachutes yet because I'm not doing, I'm not doing pyro charges today. I'm just doing TVC integration, flight software loading, stuff like that. You can do parachutes um, probably the day before the flight. Uh, that's usually the safest time to do it. And so now the plan is into the vehicle it goes. Okay, this one will have to be changed, but into the vehicle it goes. And then if we look down, line it up, I can screw this booster together. Uh-oh, I really am running out of screws now. Okay, can we take some more questions while this is happening? I need something else to talk about other than screwing things in, just so I feel like this, this content is, is at least mildly entertaining. What happened to my dog, Martha? She died last summer. She died kind of around this time last summer, which is too bad, but she was old and she ended up getting a, uh, a pretty bad growth on her foot. So we had to put her down, which is too bad. But I think she, she, she lived to 13, almost 14. And I miss her, but that's how things go. It was kind of rough movement there. Let's see if this works. Okay, we're rolling. The roll program definitely works. Okay, great, that's good. Um, what soldering iron do I use? I have a new Kalox 878D. You know, you can find a link to it. You can find an affiliate link to it in the description of uh, the most recent Landing Model Rockets episode. All right, this booster is complete. And now, let's get the left booster. Wait, did we already do this? Oh my gosh, we already did. That's amazing. Let's get the center core. Now, the center core is missing uh, the legs on the bottom. Um, <laughs> a William Hun gives me $2.50 and says, Turtle Song, Persian Language, HD 240p. Is this a direction to do this on YouTube? Because I don't want to get copyright claimed, so I don't think I can play any other videos right now. But thank you for the suggestion. Okay. I'm just gonna remove these here and Apply the legs at the bottom. Okay, the legs are on, but they actually go like that. Right, because I need space. Wait, that doesn't make sense, does it? Hold on. Let me look at a picture. Hold on. VPS space. Falcon Heavy. Um, yeah. No. Okay. The ports are in the front. That's what I'm looking for mostly. The ports are in the front of the vehicle. Yeah. So it should be off to the side. This is correct. I'm like 90% sure of it. Yeah. Neuralink thoughts. Um, would you do it? I would. Timothy, you know, um, I think I may have shared this on the live stream the other day too. My thoughts on Neuralink are very, are one of two things. They're, they're both of two things. Um, hold on, I'm just taking some residual stuff off the side of this. My two thoughts on Neuralink are one, very, very cool. And two, I don't want it in my brain. That's what I think. Very cool, and I don't want it in my brain. Oh no, ah, oh, why am I like this? Okay, putting it back together again. 
like Humpty Dumpty, but a rocket. And so this goes here. So if we line it up, now we can screw it in. We put one of these around here. And now we just need some screws. Oh, wait, I can just use these ones. This is great news. Okay. And here. Very nice. This is the bottom of our center core. And now we can put the top on and then build the whole dang thing, man. I'm gonna build it. That's what we're here to do is vehicle integration. And now that it will have to be D integrated or basically taken apart um, later on down the down the down the road because we will need to uh, put those pyro charges in there to actually get it prepped to fly but this is about 90 percent of the work um, okay when will be your next launch sometime next week um, I don't know when exactly the next Falcon Heavy rocket will fly, but it'll be the Falcon Heavy next, and uh, it'll be next week, hopefully, if the weather cooperates. Matthew M. says, have you ever read slash listened to Zen and the Art of Motor Motorcycle Maintenance by Robert M. Pier Piercing? Uh, Matthew, I have not. Should I? Are those two separate things, or are they the same thing? Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. TBH this is a pretty badass title. That's pretty cool. Okay, side four. Um, if, if anyone's curious about this, I label all of the sides of my rocket. So four, three, it says center core, uh, up, two, center core. And so these are all labels that tell my future self when I'm building which screw holes are meant to line up with which sides. And so this is super helpful when building. It seems like overkill when you're actually designing parts and, and putting things together for the first time. But I promise you, it will save you so much time down the road. And it will save you headache and misalignments and all sorts of nonsense. So there's one. There's two. Three. And four. And then our center core is... Done. All right. Boost stages of the Falcon Heavy model have been integrated. They are done. We are looking good. Um, let's do something a little different. Let me switch camera views. Um, stand by while I do this. So new video capture device. And we're going to make this... This guy right here. Okay, there we go. Hi everyone. Let me move some cameras and mics around and we're gonna put this whole thing together, finish this out. Okay. So, we've got the, uh, we've got the boot, I should probably move this back too. Okay, let's see, how does that look? Looks pretty good. So this is the Falcon Heavy facing forward. This is the boost stage of the Falcon Heavy facing forward. This is, I can read it on the bottom because I have it written here, this is the left core. Um, so this goes on the left of the vehicle, which for you, this is your left. And if I put it in there, it should slide right in. And all I need now are the bolts to secure it to the center core. I'll show you these in just a moment. So we're attaching it now. And it's not quite... There it is. That fits. We just secure this stuff up top. Now the bolts don't actually stay on here for flight. Um, 
Instead, they stay on here for ground operations. So this is, these are just to make sure that uh, things don't get super crazy and separate to, on the ground. Um, and they work pretty well, honestly. Okay, stand by. <laughs> Uh, that, that, just, a, just a heads up here, folks, there is going to be a dab coming up soon because we're just about done with integration on the FH vehicle. So I just want to let you all know there's a dab coming soon. <laughs> okay, and this is the right core. If I look, as she knows, if I look down here at the bottom, it's very sooty, but I can kind of make out that it says right core. So we'll attach it down here, and we'll get the top part, and there we go. Get another bolt from over here. It's really just a hex, hex nut, not really a bolt. Screw it down, and then I need one on the other side, right here. Ah, there it is. <laughs> Dropped it. Okay, stand by. That's the last bolt. Should we put the center, the second stage on? We, I mean, we integrated the second stage. We might as well. Okay, there it is. With the proper flight computers and proper code, let's do this. One, two, three, four. This is the Falcon Heavy, ready for flight. Isn't that cool? Okay, I'm just gonna turn it all off. Great. We did it, folks. We did it. Should I get the launch pad out? I should get the launch pad out. Let's see how it fits. Because that was the last live stream I did. And I just wanna make sure that everything looks good. So this is the launch pad. Let's move the camera back. And the primary thing that I'm concerned about is the integrity of these launch clamps. All right, stand by. Oh, wait, this is still upside down. Um, hold on. Okay, there we go. That's pretty much, pretty much good there. And so now what I wanna see is if it will actually sit flat on here and if we can actuate all the clamps. Oh, it hits the ceiling. I forgot about this. This is a tall rocket. Forgot about that ceiling thing. Okay, so let's let's take a little verdict here. The center core sits slightly up because it was somewhat compressed. However, this is actually let's just make sure this is actually not a huge deal. Um, we should be able to not have trouble from this. The center core is really what I'm worried about. Um, more than any of these other ones. I'm just going to manually actuate the clamp because the other ones have not been turned on yet um, or not been enabled and plugged in. Um, so the rear clamp has a little bit of trouble actuating. We can fix that. Um, this clamp is just fine. There's no problem there. This clamp is just fine. And now the vehicle will not come off. So that's great news. Which side should I be on here? That's not a great sound. <laughs> so we did it. Oops. Well, there goes something. We did it, everyone. The FH has been integrated. I also missed a bunch of chat. So let's get a couple of questions going here and see what's going on. Lance Brown, thank you so much. If you take off the legs, 
what will the launch clamps connect to? Also, how will it stand? Oh, will it stand during launch? Yes, yeah, so Lance, if I take off the legs, what I mean mostly is that I will only have one of these, which is the, uh, oh, hold on. This should be centered. Let's do that. Is that it's centered? When I uh, say that, what I mean is uh, I will only use one of these things, which is the, uh, not the legs, but sort of the base plate. And that's fine, because then it can still use the launch clamps. Okay, how do you ignite the engine? I use a pretty standard fireworks igniter. Um, these are super fast to ignite. They require very low current, um, and they're, they come in a ton of bulk. Um, all right, will I play KSP again? Yeah, it's a little bit late, but I, I don't know. I'm still kind of down to do it. Um, Joe, you should launch a Wii to space. <laughs> hey, it's Rob. Hi, Rob. All right. Um, will you ever use a hybrid rocket? Probably not. I don't care that much about hybrids. Um, are you going to do a part in landing model rockets on making a launch pad, making maybe a launch computer? Spacebird. Yeah, I totally will. We're a little bit away from that right now because I'd like to get some flight software stuff done, but Launchpad is definitely a, a, a part of that. Um, would your landing become easier if you had larger landing legs? Yes, but then they would be heavier and larger and harder to print and less realistic. So I, I would rather not go for the larger landing legs. Um, okay, F for crab. Oh gosh, is the crab losing all the legs? I think it's losing a ton of legs. I have to check on the crab. Oh dear. Oh no. I stopped the print. Oh, I stopped the print. All of the back of the crab is trashed. I'm going to have to try the crab another day. I'm so sorry, folks. I don't know what to say. He lived a short life, but a good life. He lived a life entirely on a live stream. <laughs> this is such nonsense. How long have I been streaming? I think we're about to hit four hours. Let's not get to four hours. Here's the plan, folks. I am going to stop this stream, but I'm not going to go away. I'm going to go over to my other channel and stream some Kerbal Space Program, if anyone is interested. It might not be very long. We might just do a very quick mission to Duna or something like that. Um, but that's my plan. I'm going to go stream KSP for just a little bit and then uh, I'll sign off and, and go to bed like a normal person. That's my plan. Listen, here's how this is going to work. You can either go to this link, which I will find right now, or someone else can just put my link in there. Um, hold on, stand by. This is the link. This is the channel to go to. I'll spam it in the chat. That channel will have the Kerbal Space Program stream, which will start within probably about 10 minutes of me turning off this stream. I will put a link in the chat uh, to... Actually, no, I won't. Just go over to that channel. I'll see you there soon to play some Kerbal Space Program. Thank you so much for joining me on this massive integration project for the Falcon Heavy. We're going to launch next week. It's going to be really cool. I'm very excited for it. And... That's what's up. So thanks again, folks. May your skies be blue and your winds be low. And now I have to go turn off the stream. One sec, here we go. And... Cut!
don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone about it. Just just drop a huge, just one like, and don't tell anyone. Goodbye.